Welcome, everybody. It is Saturday Night Alive for the Global Peace Tribe, and it is Thanksgiving weekend. It is the time that we drop into gratitude. And so tonight's show is all about the powerful magic of gratitude. Uh, I want to acknowledge our wonderful co-host, who's normally here, Deborah Giusti, is on vacation up at Mount Shasta. So blessings to you, Deborah. But we have the lovely and magnificent Jan Kaplan, who's going to be co-hosting with me. And you'll see Jan in a few minutes. Um, and I want to invite all of you to really participate. Tonight's going to be a very participatory show, both during our main show and we have a very special after show. And throughout the show, we want to hear from you and we're going to select some of the things that you're grateful for. So for those of you who are watching on Facebook or on YouTube, come on into our Zoom room. It's really easy. Just go to globalpeacetribe.com, globalpeacetribe.com, and register. It takes like a minute. Once you register, you'll immediately get the link that'll bring you into our Zoom room. And that's where you can join the, usually we have a couple of hundred, maybe 300 people in the Zoom room with us. And it's easier to interact. Plus, I can see your comments. And I am going to be periodically reading what people are grateful for. <clears throat> and I am grateful for each and every one of you and for our amazing presenters that we have tonight. So uh, with no further ado, I'm going to turn it over to uh, the wonderful co-host that I get to work with tonight. Here is Jan Kaplan. Welcome, Jan. Hey, twinkles out there to everybody. And what a great magical night of gratitude we have in store for you. It's going to be amazing. And, um, you know, gratitude is just something that everybody can practice. And that's what I love about it. Yeah. So um, tonight we've got, um, am I introducing people now, Scott? Is that it? <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Well, our luminaries. So our keynote speaker, Dr. Brenda Wade, um, she's a psychologist and expert. She's been on the Dr. Oz show. She's been on many uh, media shows and national TV programs, and she's a sought-after expert, speaker, and author, and we're so excited to have her back here tonight. And um, believe it or not, there is another Janice Kaplan. Um, we have the same name, um, and <laughs> it's kind of amazing. We got to meet. Um, she's a journalist, TV producer. She's the author of many popular books, including the New York Times bestseller, The Gratitude Diaries. And uh, her newest book is The Genius of Women. And so we're very excited to have her on. Um, Louis Schwartzberg is an award-winning cinematographer. You might know him from directing Fantastic Bungie. Um, he spent his career providing breathtaking time-lapse imagery uh, and um, so tonight we're going to get to hear from him. And um, Nierka is a transformational leader and master coach. She worked with Tony Robbins for five years and on her own. She, she guides people into amazing transformation with her dynamic, life-changing courses, events, and international adventures. And the brothers Karin are here with us. We're so excited to have them. We've been waiting for them for a long time to come on the show. Isaac and Torald, uh, who toured the world as the kin, who've appeared on numerous uh, major television shows and uh, concerts all over the world. So they're gonna bring their uh, empowerment and transformational leadership um, in a small micro homeopathic dose here tonight for us. Um, Sarita is back with us and we're very excited to have her back as well. Um, she is on a worldwide mission to uplift, inspire and heal. What better person to be on the show? She raises consciousness with a uniquely feminine blend of reggae, roots, soul, and acoustic flavors. Sounds delicious to me. <laughs> and last but not least, wow, Paul Draper is back. And we love Paul. We love his magical artistry. And if you don't know Paul, you're going to learn more about him later, but he's been on television, Las Vegas, 
everywhere. And, and he's an anthropologist. I love that about him. So anyways, welcome back, Paul. So thank you, Scott. Thank you, Jan. I appreciate it very much. <laughs> um, so those are who we're going to have tonight. We're going to really go deep. Um, so I am really excited. I've been hearing about the Brothers Corin for a long, long time. And uh, they're, we're so excited about having them that they're actually going to be on two weeks in a row. We have never had the same musical artist on two weeks in a row, but you're going to get to hear them tonight and you're going to get to hear them again uh, next week. Um, and let me tell you a little bit about them since it's the first time on the show. Um, as Jan said, they're on a mission and in getting to know them, uh, they're very committed to uh, sharing transformational leadership. Um, they are very consciousness oriented um, and they have performed live on Conan. They've earned a gold record. They performed uh, to over a million people while touring with Coldplay, Pink, Roddy Stewart and Bon Jovi. Um, but now their mission has shifted to one that seeks to include many voices as they listen and study the transformative effect of music on human well-being, which is perfect. Uh, for what our show is all about. So welcome, gentlemen. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Scott and, and everyone. And thank, thanks so much for having us uh, here. We're so stoked to get the invitation. And uh, we're going to start tonight uh, with a song that we'd finish out all our shows uh, when we were playing Headlining as the Kin. And we still play it to this day because it brings people together. Uh, about six years ago, we started our work now, which is really to hear the world's song one voice at a time. And we've been voice coaches and, and, and mentors around voice relationship for many years. Uh, in the last six, we've discovered that there's sort of almost a countless amount of human beings on the planet that have a disenfranchised and a, and a disconnected experience of being home in these whole body instruments, as we call them. And our mission is to help people come home to them. And actually, speaking of gratitude, to drink from the well mm. of experience and forego the myth of performance. And we're going to just give you a taste of that this evening. Uh, so thank you so much for, for letting us be here with you all. And we have a belief, uh, and our bias is that uh, everyone has a voice worth hearing. And uh, that when we do, like Charles said, when we do drink from that well, when we experience it, when we taste our own voice, uh, immense gratitude and joy is, is perhaps on the other side of that terror that uh, yes. apparently 25% of all Americans fear Public speaking and singing goes without saying uh, more than uh, death itself. So we're going to give you a taste of that joy and gratitude in this song. We're going to ask you to sing along and in the safety of your own home, sing to your cats or your um, your neighbors. But sing along and, and let's let's activate, let's tune in, let's connect into that frequency, that music that we are, that music of the spheres, that harmony with everything and nothing. This one's called Everything's Changing. That one constant in life change. Time moves slowly. I watch in my feet. I watch in my feet as I'm falling into the moment. I burn like quickening. You play in my heart, play in my heart till the pulse. Generation Oh, with the ground is shaking Nothing is steadfast It's like you couldn't rely on love To keep you falling in so fast When everything's changing I, I, Oh, I want to stay close When everything's changing I, I, Oh Far keeps taken by the monkeys and dreamers. He ready to lose it. Mm. Oh, with images exploding in your mind, it's like you couldn't rely on reasoning to get you through this time. And everything's changing now. Everything's changing now. 
right, sing after me. Use your voice, warm your voice. Let's hear yourself. Greatest gift. Ready? Sing after me. Ah, oh, come on. singing with us everyone we are so grateful to be here oh my Body god wow. you, all. <laughs> you guys wow <laughs> i'm still kind of blown away actually <laughs> she's so beautiful so yeah and, and you know the those words because everything is changing and it scares the crap out of so many of us <laughs> <laughs> and um, there's a, a sweetness to how you sing that that helps us to really, which is a big part of what this show is all about. It's like, okay, things are changing and it's change is scary. Mm -hmm. But boy, you add a, a beautiful sweetness to that. You Thank know? you, Scott. Yeah, and change is, is the one constant, right? And can we, can we come home in these instruments and, uh, and ride through the dynamics? Feel it all. Yeah. Hey, you guys are working with our friends at the Shift Network. We uh, are indeed. So tell yes. us a little bit about uh, what you're doing. We, we've had the pleasure of this is our second course with the Shift. And, and yet this one, we wanted to hone in on the simple, profound opportunity, the sacredness of voice that each of us get to dive into. And one, one thing we know for sure, Scott, is we're each given these instruments uh, that no one else has mm -hmm. for a finite period of time. And what a sacred, incredible, joyous, and, and potentially um, the most grateful thing you could ever experience is your mm. own voice. Certainly to us, we are biased. However, what we've discovered is when someone forms a new relationship to coming home, um, inviting their mind back in, into their body and allowing what essentially is their sound to come out past their lips with no attachment to the result produced. When they fall back into that experience, something magnificent um, comes to the surface if they've longed to be free and radically expressed in their mm. life. Voice is that vehicle. So we're here for anyone and everyone. Uh, we specialize in the terrified uh, and, and uh, we welcome the experienced. That's beautiful. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Scott. you so much. God bless. And you'll be back in a little while. You will. See you soon. All right. Thank you, guys. Well, this is going to be kind of fun. Uh, to introduce Janice Kaplan, here's Jan Kaplan. And actually, I am Janice Kaplan, but I'm not this Janice Kaplan. So it's so amazing. I've known about her for years, and now we have an opportunity to have her on the show. Um, Janice Kaplan, not me, is a journalist, TV producer, author of many popular books, including the New York Times bestseller, Gratitude Diaries, and her newest book, The Genius of Women. And to give you a little bit of background, um, she was the editor-in-chief of Parade Magazine, executive producer of more than 30 primetime network television specials. And she appeared frequently on TV shows, including Today, Good Morning America. And she hosts a daily podcast called The Gratitude Diaries on mm -hmm. iHeartMedia. And so I'm really excited to introduce Janice Kaplan. All right, here's a video of our um, interview with her that we did uh, earlier in the week. Hello, it is such a pleasure to get to be with you tonight to talk about gratitude. I wrote, as you know, the Gratitude Diaries, and I spent a full year trying to live more gratefully. I have to tell you, nothing really special happened that year. 
But simply by changing my attitude every day, I ended up with what was probably the best year of my life. And I love talking about gratitude and the gratitude diaries, because I know that by simply changing your attitude, you can end up with one of the best years of your life too. So we've just had the one holiday of the year that has the word thanks in its name. But saying thanks really shouldn't be a one time a year activity. So let's talk a little bit about how to make more So let's talk a little bit about how to make gratitude more meaningful every day in your life. When I was writing the book, I had a well-known polling organization do a survey on Americans and gratitude. The results came in and they were really interesting. We asked people if they think grateful people are happier. Well, what do you think? Do you think grateful people are happier? If you said yes, you're agreeing with about 90% of Americans who said, yes, absolutely, grateful people are happier. And then we asked, are you grateful for family and friends? What did you say? Well, once again, we had 90, 95% of people saying, yes, grateful for family and friends. But then came another question. We asked, do you express gratitude? And all of a sudden, the numbers dropped and less than half of Americans said that they express gratitude on any regular basis. So that's when I realized what the problem is. We have this big gratitude gap. We know there's something that can make us happier, but we don't do it. So if you wanna be happier and feel more grateful and get yourself through these generally anxious times, you have to start closing that gap and expressing the gratitude. So I have a really simple way for you to start doing that. A lot of research shows that keeping a gratitude journal dramatically improves feelings of well-being. The problem to me is that a gratitude journal can sound like a lot of work to some people. You're busy all day, you cut home at night, you maybe prefer to read a book or watch a movie than sit down and start writing an essay on being grateful. So there's something much simpler you can do. And here's what I'd say. Put a scrap of paper next to your bed. Tell yourself that every night for the next week, you're going to write down one thing that makes you grateful. Just one thing, a couple of words, no long essay, one thing a day, who can't do that? So how does that work? How is it actually going to make you happier? Well, imagine this, you wake up tomorrow morning and the sun will be shining and you'll look outside and you'll think, oh, grateful for sunshine, done for the day. That's what I'm writing down tonight. And that's okay because you've started the day with a positive perspective and that's going to linger for longer than you think. Or maybe it'll get to be four o'clock in the afternoon and you haven't been grateful for anything. And you'll suddenly remember that scrap of paper that I told you to have next to your bed. You gotta write something on it. So you'll stop and you'll look around and maybe you'll see some flowers blooming and you'll think, okay, I'll be grateful for the flowers. Or you'll pour yourself a cup of coffee and you'll think, coffee's good. Okay, grateful for coffee. Again, finding one positive thing to focus on, even if you've been having a terrible day, is going to change your attitude. And you get to think about it again that night when you write it down. So try having that scrap of paper beside your bed for one week. I guarantee you're gonna to start to feel a change in your attitude. And after that, you don't have to do it every night. Scribble those gratitude notes three or four times a week. Again, it should never feel like homework or a burden, just something you do that gives you a lift during the day. And I think it's going to be particularly helpful right now when a lot of people are spending a lot of time complaining and obsessing and thinking about all the things that are wrong in the world. And sure, there is a lot that's wrong. I would never argue otherwise. And if there are things that you can change, go ahead, fight for change, fight for the things that you want. Being grateful doesn't mean you have to say that everything is okay, but it does mean you look for a balance. You reframe a situation so that you're not just seeing the bad because our minds too often just do go to the bad and we forget to look for the other side. We forget to look for the good. If you wanna make gratitude even more powerful for yourself, I've found that expressing gratitude out loud is the very best way to improve how you feel. And it works even when circumstances aren't ideal. I was in a very crowded grocery store right before Thanksgiving, and I noticed a young clerk who looked exhausted. He had huge boxes on all sides of him and he was refilling the shelves as fast as people could pull things off them. 
I watched him for a moment and then I said, hey, thank you so much for working so hard. It means a lot before the holiday. He looked surprised and then he gave me a little smile and he said, oh, thanks. No one ever says that. Now, let me just tell you, I was there looking for peanut butter because some little kids were coming to my house and the store did not have the brand of peanut butter my family likes. So I might have left there feeling all grumpy and irritated. But instead, just that little moment of expressing gratitude made me feel better. We generally think that expressing gratitude is a gift we give to other people, but really it's a gift that we're giving to ourselves. For me, it made me focus on how glad I was to live in a nice town with hardworking people. Now, maybe the guy in the grocery store got a little gift when I thanked him. I hope so. But I felt better about myself and the world all day. Expressing gratitude puts a little kindness into the world that reflects right back to you. An article in the Journal of Social and Clinical Psychology found that gratitude may have the highest connection to mental health and happiness of any of the personality traits they studied. It concluded that close to 20% of the differences in people's happiness could be predicted by the amount of gratitude they express. I think right now all of us could use a little boost to our mental health and that 20% rise in happiness. How we see things and what we say starts to define us. If we focus on negative stuff, as many people do on social media and when we're talking to friends, we cement that negativity in our minds. If we look for the good, we cement that. In one study at the University of California, people were divided into three groups. Some were told that every night they should go out and write down the events of their day. Others were told to write down all the things that went wrong that day. And the third group were told to write about things they were grateful for. Now, I suppose if you're a classical psychotherapist, you might think that the people who wrote about the problems were able to process them better. But that's not at all what happened. After several weeks, the people who wrote about the things that made them grateful scored higher on all the happiness tests. They were more, they were more optimistic and they even exercised more. When you focus on the good rather than the bad, even the worst situations can start to seem a little bit more manageable. If you go over and over the details of something terrible that happened, it starts to loom larger in your mind. It becomes a bigger part of, you are, of who you are. Gratitude helps you look at any problem more realistically. It reminds you that there can be good and bad in every situation. Now, you might think that you're a grateful person because you appreciate what you have. But if you don't express it, you're not getting the full benefits. So today, let me suggest that you start closing that gratitude gap. Find a very specific reason to say thank you to someone. It's not a question of being fake or sugarcoating things. It's just noticing what's happening around you in a different way. Pause and think about the people who are making a difference and doing something that helps you, something you might not normally notice, and stop to appreciate it. Hey, that peanut butter didn't get to the shelf by itself. Gratitude has a very deep resonance. The positive feeling of saying thanks stays with you. Expressing gratitude makes you feel happier and more connected. Try it with someone you encounter today. You'll have a better day, just like I did, no matter what kind of peanut butter you're eating. So happy holidays. Thanks to everyone and much gratitude. Oh, what a delight, huh? That's really something. Jen, um, to Jan Kaplan that's live with us, I'm going to bring you back on for a minute. Um, so what stood out for you when you met your your namesake? Oh, my gosh. You know, it was such a thrill because I, I had known about her, you know, for a long time. And then I thought, oh, my God, we're doing a Power of Gratitude show. What a fun way to, to get to know her. And um, anyway, she's so positive and so fun and Anyway, I'm inspired. Yeah. Uh, well, just a reminder to everybody that she did write a couple of books and we want to spotlight those. She wrote The Gratitude Diaries. And um, so, you know, we always want to acknowledge and support our uh, presenters. Um, and so really want to encourage you to uh, go get The Gratitude Diaries if you like what she had to say. Um, and then the other book that she wrote which I want to spotlight for a moment, is The Genius of Women. Now, 
the statistics show us that 78% of you watching are of the feminine gender. Um, and so um, here's a chance for us to learn all about the genius of women. And I really actually like uh, what it says from overlooked to changing the world. And I just want to say for a moment, and I mean this very sincerely, I do believe that. Um, There's so many extraordinary women and Look, I'm a white man, so I can say what I'm about to say. We blew it. White men have been in charge for a long time, and we have not done a good job. So now it's time to turn it over, and let's give those amazing women uh, the power because they're doing it right. Um, so uh, two very important books to see. All right, now, as all of you who are regulars know, we have a wonderful feature on Saturday Night Alive. And that is our Wisdom Jewels. And the Wisdom Jewels are created by Jan Kaplan, the Jan Kaplan that's with us. Uh, this one, I'll, I'll pop her back on. They're created by Jan and her partner, Jay. And you'll be seeing Jay later on tonight in our after show. So here is this week's Wisdom Jewels. I put the spotlight on Jay and Jan. Thank you both so much for creating the Wisdom Jewels every week. It's really become one of my favorite features. I know Stephen, our mystic monastery wild abbot, Jerry gets excited the moment we introduce the Wisdom Jewels. And um, Jay, you want to tell us just a little bit about what's going to take place in the after show tonight? Well, uh, we've got a, a very diverse uh, after show. We have Missy Galore. Who's, uh, she makes these incredible feather wands and she's a very talented artist and musician. We're gonna be playing a video that I did with her and uh, she's gonna be, we're gonna pray for the whole global peace tribe, which is my passion. I really enjoy praying for others. That makes me feel that I'm blessed. <laughs> so whatever works. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, Fanny and Starchild and Vagari are going to be with us. And they're going to play a live song and talk about gratitude. And they've been together 30 years and they're just, you know, they have no drama. You know, <laughs> I mean, you could just see it. I asked them about drama and they, they didn't even know what I was talking about. So uh, they're, they're really good people. And yeah, we love Fanny and, and Vigari. And so, well, 
everybody, that's a reminder that we have the after show. It'll go on at 8.30 p.m. sharp. And um, Jay, we, And I have a Baba Haridas uh, hand mudra video from the 70s. Oh, wow. It's, it's really cool. He's, he's a guru that, uh, you know, he's in that whole lineage of those days. I know Baba Haridas. Well, it's going to be fun. So everybody, make sure you stick around at 8.30 for tonight's. That's 8.30 Pacific time. For Jay's after show. And looking forward to seeing it, Jay. Thank you so much. And thanks again for creating the Wisdom Jewels. Uh, I want to invite everybody to a couple of things. Um, you know, we've been, this whole show started as a fundraiser, and we've raised over $150,000 for individuals in need. Some of the people that we've supported that were dealing with cancer or people that lost their homes in the wildfires. Um, but this month, the month of December, to be honest, our uh, recipient is us uh, because we really need to bring in a little bit more to support Saturday Night Live to continue. And so uh, I want to thank everybody who's already supported us. Um, and we're actually kind of doing a fundraising drive. And it's awkward for me to ask for money. I got to be honest, it's not easy. Um, but uh, Frankly, we need to, we're continuing to increase kind of our production value by having really good promotional videos, paying our musical artists, um, and expanding it. Um, and what started as we thought we were just going to do it for a few weeks has become obviously an institution. And every week, uh, people say, my God, Scott, this is my lifeline. Uh, Saturday Night Live is how I stay connected to community, how I feel inspired. These are hard times, and our show does provide a lot of inspiration. And not just Saturday Night Live, but as many of you know, I do a show every Friday night called Straight Talk, and we're changing the name of that show to The Awakening World, and every Sunday, my Sacred Sunday show. And these are all ways that we can uh, come together as Global Peace Tribe, um, get the resources. So your support is really needed. Um, and of course, this is a cute code. So if you take your trusty cell phone and put it to camera and go towards the cute code, what pops up is a link. You can click it and it makes it really easy for you to donate. Um, so please do support us. It's really important. We want to continue to, to grow and to expand and your support really makes a big difference for us. So thank you very much. You know, there's another way too that's kind of a win-win. And that is to support us by buying Qualia products. Um, many of you have heard me talk about it, but if you haven't, every day I take Mind. And I've been using Mind for about a year and a half now. Um, James Schmachtenberger, who's going to join us in a minute, he's with us, uh, is a friend of mine. I've known James for many years. We're actually personal friends. And um, I was aware that he had started this company, and I was excited about Nootropics, so I started using it. And I got to say, look, I'm 65 years old and I have two full time jobs. There's Love Coach Scott that every day is coaching people. And then there's Scott now that hosts and produces three online shows every weekend. And honestly, I often am working seven days a week, 12 hours a day. How do I do it? I don't drink coffee. I don't drink black tea very often. I don't like my tummy doesn't do well with it. I take qualia. And it's how I get through the day and at the age of 65 have still really good mental facility faculties. <laughs> as mm -hmm. I said. So I'm going to actually bring on my buddy James for a moment. Um, and welcome, James. It's good to have you back on the show. And good to be back. Thanks, Scott. Now, it's all about gratitude. Tell us a little bit about what you're grateful for. Mm. Well, I mean, there's, there's a pretty long list there, but I don't know, I guess one of the ones that's been really present for me lately, um, so my, my oldest dog passed away two weeks ago today. Um, and, you know, there's been a lot of grief and a lot of sadness through the process of letting go of her. Um, but what's been at least as present, if not more so, and it's been really beautiful for me, is just this real deep sense of gratitude around how much love we got to share and the years that we got to be together and the quality of the connection and all the adventures together. And um, 
yeah, I think that's been one of the areas that I've been like really attuned to the gratitude lately. And it's been a real beautiful experience because it, I, I actually feel like being able to feel and tap into the gratitude of all that we had together has made it somewhat easier to be able to process the loss. Um, but that's one that's been you know, pretty significant for me for this last couple of weeks. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I'm a big dog lover, as you know, as well. Mm -hmm. And those moments when we lose our, our beloved dogs or our beloved cats, they're big moments, you know, and every moment when I've had to put one of my, my dogs to sleep, I mean, it's, those are like some of the most significant days of my life. Mm -hmm. And it's a powerful moment when you're saying goodbye and it's, it's a big one. It's a big one. Um, and they do live forever in our hearts. Um, For sure. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's definitely been a significant experience, but I think part of why that felt relevant to share, you know, partly it's just because it's been very alive for me, but partly it's because I actually think there's a, an important lesson in that where it's like, anytime we have hard experiences, it becomes very easy to dwell on those. But in the process of dwelling on the pain and the hardship, we often lose sight of the gratitude. And in almost all circumstances, there's some type of beauty associated with the pain, or even if there's not, there's something else in life that we're still able to be attuned to that has incredible beauty that we can be deeply grateful for, that can really impact that sort of gratitude muscle. Mm -hmm. And you know, for me, it's a very alive experience right now where it's like I got to directly in a real time witness how leaning into the gratitude actually made the challenging part of the process less challenging. Not to say that it wasn't so hard, but, uh, you know, I think that's an important lesson that is valuable for, you know, almost everybody to hear is there's always going to be something difficult happening in life, which is sort of part of the nature of what is. Um, and, but within that, we have the choice of where we intentionally put our focus and to be able to continually shift that focus into gratitude has just so much potential. Um, and, you know, I guess since we're on the topic of gratitude, um, you know, I, I've actually been reading up a little bit on some of the recent studies around gratitude. You know, I'm a brain geek, right? I built a company to improve cognitive function. And, you know, we do that predominantly through chemistry, right? Providing supplements to be able to make very material impacts on people's quality of thought and concentration and just overall mental capacity. Uh, but it's actually been really beautiful to spend a little bit of time studying some of the research around gratitude and its impacts on the brain. Um, and I think it's worth sharing some of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, there, there was a uh, study done, I guess this one was a few years ago now, um, but they were using um, fMRI, right? So high definition brain imagery. And uh, this particular study, I think was about 400 people, 200 in the control group, 200 in the test population. And the only difference was that they had the people who were um, in, in the test population doing a daily gratitude practice, right? So every day writing down what they're grateful for. And they did a series of brain scans throughout. And what they found consistently was that the prefrontal cortex saw increased activity with the people who were doing gratitude practices um, and as compared to the normal group. And you know, where this is really interesting is that obviously all the parts of the brain are, are deeply important and they all serve different functions, but the prefrontal cortex more than anything is really what separates humans from all other creatures, right? Other creatures don't either don't have them or don't have them nearly as developed. And it's that area of the brain that predominantly allows for the self-referential self -referential process, right? The, I think, therefore I am, which is a fairly unique sort of human experience is predominantly going to be mediated in this part of the brain. And so what it, you know, this is a bit of a, let's say esoteric translation on what's there, but what it says to me is that the practice of gratitude increases our humanness, right? As we focus progressively more on gratitude, as we build that capacity, as we build that muscle, the part of ourselves, the part of our 
brain that's actually allowing us to experience what it is to be human is strengthening and becoming progressively more adaptive. And I think that's really interesting. And, um, you know, I, I think it le lends itself towards uh, hopefully creating an impulse in everyone to be focused more on gratitude. And then some of the other research that I was reading recently that, um, that I'm particularly excited around is the, how gratitude affects us differently based on how it shows up, right? So there's been progressively more and more information known for a while now about the impacts of gratitude. And as a result, people have been doing more gratitude lists and gratitude practices, which are phenomenal and they should happen. But what some of the more recent research is actually identifying is that the brain and nervous system respond notably more positively when the gratitude is received from an external source than when it's purely an internal source. So doing the daily gratitude lists are amazing. And there's an even greater degree of effect that happens when you hear gratitude from the people in your life. Mm. And so, you know, what that says to me is that one of the very best things that any of us can do in terms of developing more competency in and around gratitude and developing more benefit around it is to become more verbally expressive of our gratitude, right? Because the more that we choose to express our gratitude to other people, for one, it's going to improve their life even more, right? They're not only are they going to light up and have all the warm, fuzzy feelings that come with it, but it's actually making very real changes at a neurological level. And in the process of sharing gratitude with other people, what it tends to do most of the time is to elicit a similar response. Right? So the more that we can be communicative to the people in our lives about how much we appreciate them, specifically what it is that we love about them, that we value about them, the ways that they light us up, et cetera, then we're helping them. We feel great because we're doing a gratitude practice in the moment and we're dramatically increasing the odds that we're gonna to start to receive gratitude from an external source, which is then going to have the most positive impact on our nervous systems. So th those are a couple of things that are, you know, somewhat newer research, but uh, I just found particularly interesting. And I thought that, you know, in light of talking about gratitude and tying it in with brain science, since that sort of my area of interest, uh, felt like it was a worthwhile share. Beautiful. Thank you. You know, and it is from that great heart and mind uh, of James that he and a really remarkable, remarkable group of people have created these Qualia products. Um, I'm going to put a link into the chat box uh, where you can see uh, a video that I did with them where we all went a little bit more into detail. But here's a very short video, just a little bit about Qualia um, to introduce us. The brain is the most complex biological system we know of. Its ability to make sense of the world around us is nothing short of stunning. It has the capacity to make your heart beat, legs dance, and at the same time, compose your masterpiece. We nourish our bodies, but imagine what could be possible if we could further support and enhance our minds. Meet Qualia. After years of research and development, we were able to create nootropics that comprehensively support the brain's abilities, both immediate and long-term. Qualia products are made of the highest quality ingredients designed to improve focus, energy, creativity, and mood. The success of your goals, the quality of your relationships, and the richness of your life depend on the nourishment of your mind. I've never felt something so amazingly powerful in the best way. And I started taking them. Qualia, and uh, my experience has been really fantastic. It's just like all these things that the brain naturally needs. The clarity, the productivity, the focus um, is something that for me is absolutely priceless. And the fog. Experience Qualia. So I want to encourage everybody, um, James has very generously uh, giving a discount. Um, uh, there's a 15% discount across the board by using our initials, S-N-A, 
And for any of you that are first time buyers, you get 50% off your first order plus another 15%. So get started with it. Um, and James, thank you for sharing your wisdom to create these products, which I'm grateful for, and also sharing your wisdom uh, about gratitude today. Um, I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. Absolutely. If I, <clears throat> I don't know how tight we are on time. If I have one more minute, I'd love to share one other thing that I'm grateful for. Please, please do. So it's actually for the NeuroHacker team. Um, so the, the team that helped create Qualia, that did all the, the science, all the development. Um, you know, I, I'd come up with this fairly insane idea several years ago um, where, you know, I wanted to be able to make something easily accessible to people that would dramatically increase their cognitive ability, would make them just enjoy life more, feel better, and would be able to increase the amount of empathy and care that people have all you know, through sort of biochemistry. And I didn't realize exactly how difficult that idea was when I first came up with it. Um, it wasn't until I started to actually go talk to the top scientists in the space. Um, and I realized it was actually an insane concept. Um, and one of the things that I find myself just kind of continually grateful for is the number of people and the incredible amount of talent that has joined that vision. Um, and actually made it possible because it's definitely not something that I could have done on my own. Right? I can come up with crazy ideas, but I don't have the the relevant scientific background to be able to do all the different pieces. And this wasn't just people who like liked me and wanted to help. Like we ended up getting to build a team of people who you know I mean stepped down from senior positions at Fortune 500 companies because they they saw and they felt and they believed in that vision. And there's just so much gratitude for me on a regular basis, getting to work with a team of people who have such an extraordinary skill set, but are so just lovely as humans that they're willing to step down from very prestigious roles into this like little fledgling startup thing because of the ability that we all thought that it had to be able to make a difference. And now a few years into it, getting to see the difference that it's making and seeing all the people's lives who are getting better, like just such a profound gratitude for the people who were willing to take that ride together. Yeah, I really can imagine. I, I get that. And it's been good getting to know Dr. Heather, Dr. Greg. Of course, I've known you and your brother for a long time. And you all are this beautiful combination of incredibly smart with big hearts. And it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful uh, balance. James gave a TEDx talk on empathy. Mm. So um, that's something I appreciate about you, James. I do need us to move forward, but God bless you. Thank you for being on the show. I know you'll be back on again. And everybody get Qualia. <laughs> SNA is the promo code. And we've been putting it into the Zoom room where you can get it. Um, and for those of you watching on Facebook, I'll go on in there and put it up on the Facebook pages as well. And thank you, Susie, for um, posting all the links. Thank you, James. And thank I'm going to turn it over to Jan Kaplan to introduce our next musical artist. Yes, we are very excited to have Sarita back with us. She was on one of our earlier shows. Um, Sarita was born in Seoul, South Korea, raised in Perth, Australia. And she's currently, at least today, is in Los Angeles. Um, and so she calls the world home. Um, she's inspired by the beauty of the planet that we live on, as well as uh, the overwhelming realities that we face, as, uh, that humanity faces on a day-to-day -day basis. And so her songs are celebrations, revelations, invocations, and affirmations. She's got a new single that was released in August. We'll share more about her after her song, but welcome, Sarita. Thank you, Jen, and thank you, everyone. It's wonderful to be here with you all. What an amazing gathering of humans you've collected for tonight. It's just so, yeah, I'm just, what is it? Synapses are firing, listening to all of the science behind gratitude, because I know it from a feeling um, point, you know, but it's so great hearing all the science behind it. So um, I'm actually going to play the song that I put out recently. 
It's a song called New Day. And basically, I was staying in, so to any creatives out there, um, I really want to encourage you, if you like, feel like you have writer's block or something, just take yourself, if you can, on some kind of retreat, songwriting retreat, you know, painting retreat, whatever it is that you do, don't take your phone or turn it off. <laughs> I was on a songwriting retreat, solo songwriting retreat that I took myself on, staying in a friend of mine's yurt up on uh, Vashon Island in Washington State. And I woke up one morning and this song, it was one of those rare songs that just like, boom, just popped out <laughs> because I was just so grateful to be surrounded by so much beauty. And it's a song about giving thanks for every new day that we're blessed to live, to take and to wake up and take a breath and, you know, get on with our day. And I think, you know, we often wake up with things on our mind and uh, that practice of gratitude. This is basically gratitude for the new day in song form. in a good way remember every moment matters each day the blessings they are endless what do you say people it's a new beginning come what may life is what we make of it come on now let's live some life life oh life is happening come on now let's share some time life is what we make of it come on now let's live some life life oh life is happening yeah you day dawn new beginning new day dawn so kindly to use my voice for good with sincerity to do the best i can with all my ability life is what we make of it come on now let's live some life life oh life is happening come on now let's share some time life is what we make of it come on now let's live some life life oh life is happening yeah new day dawning new beginning new day dawning birds are singing new day dawning Ooh, new beginning new day dawning birds are Sharita, that's like the perfect song for what this show is all about. 
Absolutely. That's like you that's that's like would be a great theme song for us because it's true. Mm. It's during these incredible times, it's life is what we make of it. Totally. You know? totally thank you for bringing us together you know life is what we make of it and so thank you for showing up so consistently <laughs> over so much time you know to gather us and and i know like you've shared that you've really been a lifeline for a lot of people in these very curious times but i do want to say that you know it's a new beginning too it's a new day and i do feel like it's a new beginning that we're in you know and a lot of people have had the opportunity to look at what really matters in life and to focus on that and to bring their gifts forth for the greater good of all. So, yeah, obviously one of your gifts is bringing us together. So thank you. Well, and you just, everything you said is just so true. It's so important. And thank you for holding that consciousness and sharing it through your music and through your voice. And speaking of your voice, um, you know, we really want to encourage everybody to support um, our artists and Sarita's website is thejoyofsong.com. Susie's putting the link into the chat box. And you've got something coming up. Tell us a little bit about the Voice is Love uh, journey for women. Yeah, your voice is love. So um, probably five or so years ago now, I think I started holding uh, voice and healing workshops for women as I toured around the world. And just found so much um, transformation, so much, it's just insane how, and the Brothers Corrin was sharing too, you know, people, we, we get in our own way so much and really like each one of us is an instrument in this, in this orchestra that is the universe. That's a paraphrase from the great Sufi author and musician uh, Hazrat Inayat Khan. Each one of us has a voice that is the only one of its kind in the whole of creation, in the whole of history, in the whole of time to come. And it's our it's our unique sonic fingerprint. And if we don't sound it, then it doesn't get sounded. So my lens is very much like it doesn't matter what your voice sounds like. It, what matters is that it sounds um, and that the upside of sounding your voice is that, you know, over time, if you practice and another lens that is very important to me is freedom through discipline. If you practice, you will find that freedom and your voice will sound, you know, better. It will become more resonant. So I've just been on my journey as a woman, just called to work with women. And um, I mean, we're just so bombarded as women from the age of, I think it kicks in right in the preteen age. Um, I had the blessing of working with a couple of nine and 10 year old girls last year and they were just songs on tap, no self-judgment, you know, no self-doubt, just like a song. I was helping them uh, formulate their songs and it was difficult to keep up because there were so many of them. And then at the other, um, at the other end of that is a six, she's in her sixties. One of my students, she was told in the seventh grade that she was tone deaf. Wow. She carried that for like five decades, whatever that is. And um, came to me and, and we, busted down like literally brick by brick we busted through that um limiting belief because it wasn't true god bless you for the work that you're doing um and it's time you know women we're coming out of however many thousands of years of yeah, so of, uh, don't, don't, <laughs> the feminine don't. is flowing forward thank goodness after so long so your voice is love go to, her website, program. go to her website and sign up everybody. we're gonna go deep Yep. <laughs> um, and, you know, now tell us about the free, you've got a free right. production. Yeah, so there's a free um, intro workshop and Q&A this Tuesday at 2 p.m. Pacific time. So um, sign up for that if you want a taste. And I will be making a special um, offer for everyone that shows up to that. So, yeah, it's both like singing as self-care and exploring the healing power of the voice because we're vibratory beings we have 37 trillion cells and when we intentionally sound our voice we get all our 37 trillion cells you know, <sighs> resonating as one so it's the healing power of sounding your voice and also some super useful techniques that will get your voice activated that will help you resonate more so yeah 
Thank you, Thank you, Serena, you so for work. And Serena will be back. She's going to close our show up. So uh, we'll we'll see her again a little bit later on in the show. And thank you for the wonderful work you're doing, Serena. Thank you. Well, it's now my my honor to introduce our keynote speaker for tonight. Um, and I am talking about Dr. Brenda Wade. Um, and she's a psychologist and expert for the Dr. Oz Show. And she appears on numerous national TV shows. She's very sought after, and we got to have her again. She was with us once before, and when I was designing the show in gratitude, I thought of her and I thought, oh my God, I wonder if there's a chance that we could get her. And I'm so grateful that on this Thanksgiving weekend, she agreed to be with us. For any of you who don't know her work, um, she's an internationally recognized leader specializing in relationships, uh, diversity, and inclusion, remediation, and training. She delivers intersectional presentations that transform embedded patterns of racism, sexism, and homophobia. Thank you so much, Brenda, for doing that work. Mm -hmm. She writes as the love ambassador for Online for Love, and she created the science-based modern relationships training programs. Her motto is learn better and love better. She's hosted four national television shows, as well as the longest running San Francisco Bay Area K Ron 4 TV program, Black Renaissance. She serves as the chapter chair of the Zenith Level, Women's President's Organization, on and on and on. She's doing so much, it's remarkable. Um, I spoke to her yesterday and I was blown away with all the different things she's involved with. Um, Brenda, thank you. I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. Women human beings such as yourself that are so dedicated to transforming our world and you do it in so many ways. So thank you very much. And thank you for being with us tonight. It's such an honor, Scott. I can't begin to tell you. My heart just started blooming as you were speaking. I feel so honored and so enlivened. You know, the music with the brothers, Corin, listening to beautiful Sarita, listening to the other speakers, James, getting into all the brain hacking, which is my sweet spot. So you guys have been warned about that. If you hear some brain science coming at you, I have to bring that into the conversation because if we don't understand what is really happening in our bodies and our minds, and above all, because what I'm going to be talking with you about is putting relationships right down front when we talk about gratitude and talk about gratefulness, because my beat is everything about relationships. I don't care if it's talking about mother-daughter, father-son, with your siblings, where you know sibling rivalry and all that nonsense gets triggered. We have something here that whether it's your beloved sweetheart, your longtime spouse or partner, we have something here that can help heal and uplift and nurture relationships. And that's gratefulness. It's a tremendous power. So let me just jump in the way that I start all of my trainings and, and everything that I do, our mastermind programs. We always start with just a moment of focus. So I invite you to take a breath with me. And not just a shallow breath into the lungs, but imagine you could breathe all the way down to the floor of your pelvis. And as you're taking that breath in, I want you to hold one thought. And that thought is, I am so grateful for my being. Breathe it in. I am so grateful for my being. Everything about you that you criticize, you think isn't good enough, you're too this or too that or not enough, whatever, let it go and breathe the next breath. I am so grateful for my being. Everything about me serves a purpose. What I think isn't good enough is where I'm called to do more work, to cultivate myself, to bring more of my true self to life. So last breath, I am so grateful for my being. Let the resonance just begin to expand. Let yourself come more alive with being grateful for your being because where we do the most harm in relationships is where we're suppressing ourselves, where we're criticizing ourselves, finding ourselves lacking in some way. And above all, 
failing to see the beauty, the grace, the intelligence that we all have. So let me share just a little bit about my journey. I'm the second of seven children. My parents came out of the deep South. They came from my mother from New Orleans, Louisiana, and my father from a part of Louisiana that's just known as the country. We used to say it's so far back up in the woods, we pump in daylight. You take a lunch to the mailbox and you definitely take a stick to get the snakes in the outhouse because it was way back in the woods. And in spite of all of that, Somehow my father uh, found a way out and the way out was the same for, I think for a lot of men, especially African-American men, he went into the military and my mom became a teacher who got a master's degree in education after having, or while having seven children, they all came out to San Francisco where I was born and raised. So with that background, one of the things that was very clear for me is that my parents were struggling. There was a lot of, of outbreak, of rage and upset that could happen, never directed at one another. My father worshiped my mother, but we kids took a lot of hits and physically, emotionally, mentally, in spite of all the things they gave us that were wonderful, great education, um, being able to speak, as my mother used to say, the queen's English because she was a teacher, um, there was still this deep pain. And what it did for me is I internalized, and I know I'm not the only one, I internalized that I wasn't good enough. And there were things about me that were just somehow, you know, I couldn't reconcile that I was a good enough human being. That's why we started with that breath, that I'm grateful for my being. I had to learn all of that. And it was quite a long journey. And I'm going to cut the long story short. But what happened for me was I met teachers along the way. I had the tremendous good fortune to be personally mentored by Dr. Virginia Satir. Some of you know Virginia's work. She created humanistic psychology, family therapy, neurolinguistic programming. So I got to sit at her knee as this little tiny 22 year old and get all of that training. I've had a wonderful spiritual life. Chocho Imamoto was my spiritual teacher. I've worked with many other spiritual teachers over the years, but I started out before I met Virginia doing hard science. So I'm going to ask you now to forgive me because we are going to get into some hard science. And I love all the other speakers framing the science for us, but I'm going to talk only about my beat, which is love, love relationships. And yes, I do all the other kinds of relationships and, you know, help companies and corporations to deal with racism, sexism, ageism, all those things. But right now we're going to go into love because I know that Saturday Night Alive is one of those places where what we hold is the vibration, the frequency of love, thanks to Scott and Deborah and tonight, Jan. So if you could just for a moment, imagine falling in love with yourself and being grateful for your being, how might that shift your love life, your relationship life? So all the research does say we have 12 powers of the heart. Love, wisdom, truth is a trifecta. You put love, wisdom, truth together, you get a flame that's vibrating at a high Frequency, those of you who are frequency beings like me, you know, that's the violet fire. But in that fire, we also have the capacity to transform, to transmute, to forgive. And if we can forgive ourselves, what are the key ingredients to bringing about forgiveness, whether it's ourselves or others? Number one is to be grateful. Every experience. Now, there's a baby crying in the background. Some of you might hear it. I'm visiting a dear friend who has a precious little 18 month old and he is sleepy. So he's crying himself to sleep, I'm afraid. So if you hear that, just stay with me and we're sending him love and sending his mommy love. So as we breathe in, now take this journey with me. When you are in an intimate relationship with someone, what are the things that tend to trigger you? Now be honest. Is it that your partner doesn't listen? 
or maybe you just feel lonely and think you're stuck in loneliness and you never find a partner. One of my secret superpowers is getting people in relationships. And I have in my office a whole wall of wedding invitations and thank yous from people that got in relationship. So this is how we do it. You start by saying, what is it that I cannot accept in that other person? You don't need me to tell you this and turn around the mirror. It's going to be something you cannot accept or be grateful for in yourself. So I'm challenging you right now. What is it you tend to project most often onto others? And the closer they are to you, the more they're going to trigger your projection. Now, one of the reasons this is important is we're going into winter, the holiday season, the time of more breakups for couples, more breakdowns, for people in couples and people who are single. We have the highest rate, you know this, this time of year of depression, but also two weeks into January, the most number of people filing for divorce. Now, why? Of course, it's low light affecting the brain, but it's also that when the light is low, we don't remember that we can turn on the light inside. So here we go. We're going to do a quick process together. Start tapping right here on the sternum, your breastbone. Right under that bone is a teeny weeny little gland called the thymus gland. We're going to activate it. This is my favorite process, and I always like to share it because within 60 seconds, the thymus gland starts pumping that thymus hormone through your heart. It creates a condition called softening your heart, opening your heart. And as you soften and you open your heart, you're better able to activate those 12 powers. Now, the power we're working with tonight is gratitude. So breathe in again. I am grateful for my being and I'm grateful for the things I have struggled with in my life, the things that were hard for me, because as I activate that gratefulness, guess what it brings online? If I can be grateful for my own shortcomings, the things I thought weren't good enough, then I can be grateful for you and yours. That awakens compassion. Compassion is the twin of gratitude. So as we feel gratitude for life, we have compassion for ourselves, for others, for Mother Earth. We have compassion. And don't we need that right now? More than ever. Our earth mother is saying, "Um, excuse me, I'm not going to be able to survive if you people don't have gratitude and compassion for me. So that's the big picture. But now I want you to bring it back to your love life. Now, if you're single and lonely, I dare you to be more grateful for yourself. Now, let your hand just rest and grateful for anyone else who comes into your life, because as you Share this beautiful heart energy. You, my darlings, are releasing a magnetic power. And that magnetism increases the love because at the end of the day, all those 12 powers of the heart add up to this tremendous magnetic love that we can put out, but also receive. So if you're single and lonely, Practice being grateful for yourself and everyone and everything around you. You will magnetize love. If you're in a relationship, don't let the winter darkness destroy it. Practice being grateful for yourself. That opens the door to having gratitude and gratefulness for your partner. If you can't have it for yourself, it is really hard to share it. But the toughest one of all is always giving love and gratefulness to ourselves. Now, I want you to be aware that as we're doing these practices to open heart power, that does increase the immune system being strong and healthy, excuse me. It also increases our capacity to think outside the box, to look for solutions and to find them. So there's a cascade that happens. This heart brain is one of the three brains, head brain, heart brain, gut brain, And this is a brain, you know this, people say, trust your heart, listen to your heart. What does your heart tell you? Oh, your heart knows the answer because we've always had this clair sentient power of the heart. So I want you 
to think of gratefulness, gratitude. And I'm going to quote Brother David Steindeldoss. I had the tremendous honor of interviewing him in the interviews on Facebook. If you guys want to see that interview with Brother David and with Anthony Chavez, Cesar Chavez's grandson, talking about the power of gratefulness. And Brother David said this one thing I will always remember. He said, you think that when you're happy, you'll be grateful. It's the other way around. When you're grateful, you'll be happy. And I'd like to add, you think when you find love or when you share love, you'll be grateful. I say when you're grateful, you are generating, resonating, vibrating at the frequency of love. So love is guaranteed, but it starts in here. So I'm going to hold there because I know, Scott, you may have questions or comments. Anyone else that has questions, feel free to put them in the chat. And Jan, if you can grab them or Scott and read them to me. Guys, I want to be in dialogue with you, not just you know, throw things at you. So tell me what's up for you as we're having this discussion about love. Oh, and by the way, before I forget, Cyber Monday is this Monday. And I have a Cyber Monday offer, I have to tell you. Um, I've written four books on love, fifth book coming out soon on love that's not working at all. I'm going to save the title because my publisher told me I have to. But here's the deal. I have written a book called ebook called Are You Sabotaging Your Love Life? That book goes with a two-hour live seminar with me. And I'm going to read the title because I want to make sure I get it just right so you can find it. That is up on Eventbrite right now. And hang on, hang on. It's called The Five Worst Love Mistakes You Can Make and How to Avoid Them. Just in time for the holidays so you don't have to ruin your relationship. So you get this package, which would normally be a $97 two-hour training with me. You get that plus the book, the two hours of training, plus the book, $47. Okay, how's that for a cyber offer? So grab that and there's more. I'm gonna add more into that package because I really, really live, eat, sleep and breathe that we all have the capacity to generate that frequency of love. And I believe in the holographic field that we all share the more love that goes into the field. The higher the consciousness of humanity, the higher vibration of the planet, this is the key to not just our own joy and peace, but survival on the planet. So Scott, what have we got? Questions, comments, I'm happy to. You know what? We've actually already used up our 10 minutes. Oh my God. Okay, it went by so fast. Thank um, you for you reining know, me in. <laughs> that's all right. But please make sure, get us that link so we can put it in the chat box. And what I will do is, if you can stick around a little bit, uh, towards the end of the show, we'll come back on. Um, and if we have time, I've got to finish this show by 8.30 for Jay's after show. But if there's time, I would love to um, uh, get, get your feedback. Otherwise, I want to invite you to be on my Sacred Sunday show. Um, and we'll figure out a date because I want to really have a chance. There's so much I want to talk to you about. Our conversation, our private conversation we had yesterday really triggered a lot. There's a lot to share. So mm. everybody, be staying tuned. I always feel that with you. Thank you, Scott. So um, we'll do a Sacred Sunday show together sometime in December. I'll take a look and see what dates are available, okay? Beautiful. Thank you again. It's an honor. Thank you. And a couple of places where you can find more about Brenda Wade. Um, uh, here is kind of her, we call it a promotional postcard. Um, and this is where you can contact her. Um, her email is super easy. Love at DocWade.com love at docwade.com um, or you can also go to her facebook page let me show you that um, and she's got a, a wonderful facebook page and again it's her name just go to facebook.com forward slash dr dot brenda wade dr brenda wade there she is look at that so um she and are you actually available for clients do you have do you see private clients? You know, I do, but my private practice is very small. What I spend most of my time doing, as you know, Scott, is doing live, 
trainings because cool. my goal is to call a million people home to the love of the divine in their own hearts. And the best way for me to do that is through training where I can actually do this, what I call tool transfer, transfer of consciousness so that we can all ignite one another with love, more love. So let's all stay tuned into her trainings, get her books. And um, perhaps even before the end of the show, I'll announce what, what day she's going to be on Sacred Sunday. I'll text Thank you. you. Okay. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you so Blessings. much. All right. And I think it's time for some magic. And to tell you all about that, here is Jan. Hey, hi. Wow. Paul Draper is back. And we just love Paul Draper. Um, he's appeared with David Copperfield, Lance Burton, a teller of Penn and Teller, and an expert for the uh, History Channel. He's performed for the HBO Comedy Fest, Caesar's Palace, and he was awarded the International Mag Magician Society uh, Merlin Award, I guess, uh, for being a fantastic performer. So aren't we lucky to have him here tonight? Yay! Yay. Thanks so much for having me. So this is a this is a place, Matt, right there for Thanksgiving. We uh, all just had our lovely Thanksgiving meal. A great time to be grateful for the cornucopia of life and all of the wonderment that comes there with it. Uh, but now it is time. I still have my uh, my fall decorations up, but I'm getting ready to transfer over to the Christmas and Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and all the different winter festivals coming up. There are over 37 different winter Winter festivals coming up to do more shows for like that from here and so one of the big parts of that the decorations that I love to put up are Christmas ornaments I'm gonna show you even though I'm a Jew from Salt Lake City Utah my father was Mormon so we do Christmas ornaments there's a little Christmas Paul right there watch close I have three Christmas ornaments one two go into my hand and one that one right there goes into my pocket and yet somehow Somehow, even if one shatters, one breaks, the cat jumps on the Christmas tree or the Hanukkah bush, I still have one, two, three Christmas ornaments. Don't worry. There's always enough with gratitude and family and love. We'll take one of those ornaments, put it away, put it away, and yet somehow there's always one, two, three Christmas ornaments. If I take one of those ornaments and I toss it really fast, a strange thing happens. All the color comes off of it. Oh, no, it's white. It's just a white Christmas ornament. Okay, so now I have two white ornaments and or two red ornaments and one white one. Here, Brenda, since uh, since you're uh, still unmuted, if you would, Dr. Wade, uh, name a Christmas color other than red and white. Uh, green. Green. Perfect. Wiggle your fingers. Say green. Just green. like that. Just green. like that. Green. Look, it's a green Christmas <laughs> ball. And just in case, I mean, you you do have on the uh, the blue sweater right there. Just in case you happen to say blue, I would have said, "Don't worry, we're wishing you a happy Hanukkah." There's oh, our good little it. dreidel. I made it out of wood. That's a wood dreidel. Thanks That's so much, beautiful. Dr. Brenda Wade. Thank you for Thank coming you, for Paul. Long. That was so, fun. <laughs> now Brenda was talking. Dr. Wade was talking so much about uh, about uh, love and and about relationships and romance. I wanted to share somebody I'm grateful for that we lost this week was Stephen Sondheim. Uh, and oh. he talked about the great composer and lyricist who worked on West Side Story and Into the Woods and, and Gypsy and all these wonderful shows. And I want to take take less than a minute to share the lyrics of uh, of one of his songs where he talked about being alive and what it is about being grateful for being alive from the show Company. It was... When you went to feel alive, you need someone to love. And these are the words. I think they're so beautiful. The idea of someone you have to let in. Someone whose feelings you spare. Someone who, like it or not, will want you to share a little, a lot about being alive. Someone to crowd you with love. Someone to force you to care. Someone to make you come through. Who'll always be there. As frightened as you of being alive. But what do you want more than anything? Someone to hold me too close. Someone to hurt me too deep. Someone to sit in my chair and ruin my sleep. 
and make me aware of being alive, being alive. Beautiful lyrics that it comes with the happiness, with the sad, the connection, the truth of who we are and how we reflect. Oh, Dr. Brenda Wade, you reminded me of all of those wonderful things in Stephen Sondheim's songs. And I look forward to seeing your book and more of your lectures on that. So I'd like to share when I've, as I've been sitting here listening to everybody talk about, to talk about all the things they're grateful for. I've just loved hearing about health, and travel, and family, and friends, love, money, our memories, and all of that comes together to make this one idea of gratitude and being so grateful together. And it's so nice learning from everybody talking about that. So as we go out into this scary world, I have a couple of little paintings here. I don't know if you can see that. It's a painting of a snowman in a snowstorm. Can you see it? No. It's, a, it's very similar to this one, a, a reindeer at the North Pole. No, right there. Another one, another. There's this big, scary world out there, and we don't always know what it's going to look like or what it's going to feel like or what we're going to see or what we're not going to see. But we create our images of love, this idea that there's a, endless love and that can be uh, jesus that can be god that can be your family that can be your friends in my childhood of course it was uh who is that popping out of nowhere oh santa claus that's right santa claus popping out of the snowy winter wonderland to bring us gifts and christmas but when we become adults it's all of our job to bring Christmas to everybody. And so it's our job, like everyone's been saying, to share with those that we love the gratitude that we feel for them and be very specific about how they make your life better. Because just like these two little sweet cookies, it's amazing that as we share our love with people, it fills our heart with love and it gives them more love and more life and it makes us more powerful when we share that gratitude with the sweetness that's on the inside. So I'm going to share some more magic with everybody in a little while, but I wanted to be quick and just share something with you. Now, Scott, it's your call. I can do more magic now, or I can get you back on schedule. Um, we got to get back on schedule. Perfect. <laughs> Um, I want to let everybody know that Paul is going to be back on and he's going to do a little something with Sarita. Notice how we kind of interchange. Paul Paul sings. Sarita is going to do a little magic trick with him. Um, and it's all part of this beautiful global peace tribe that we're part of. And guess what? You can get more Paul Draper by going to his website. And he has a very easy name to remember. It's his name, pauldraper.com. Pauldraper.com. And Paul, you're available for corporate shows, private parties. All of that good stuff. I've, I've, I've done shows for David Copperfield, the the uh, director of the CIA, the inventor of Siri, Chevy Chase's family. But I can also do shows for your family. And so, I mean, I'm here doing this. And every single day I'm giving away one show to a charity, any charities, Title I schools, uh, retirement homes, one show a day for free because it fills the world with a little magic and me with heart and hope. You know, we're in all the fast talking, let's just take a breath and for everybody to appreciate that. <laughs> Man, and he's been almost every day doing a free show for senior citizens or for kids or for you know people that need that hope. And so, Paul, I just love you for that. For 20 yeah, months. That's an invitation to all of you watching. If any of you have, I guess, like a an elderly home or a, a school or some sort of a, a charity, a charity, a charity, you will provide some of your magic for free. Paul, you're a gem. He'll be back. God Bye, everybody. You, Thank you so much, my friend. God, I, I. I'm just so grateful for all the amazing people that are part of this Global Peace Tribe. Um, and it includes all of you watching. Um, each and every one of you is precious, so thank you. Um, and again, for those of you who are watching on Facebook or on YouTube, you can still come on into our show. We still have about 90 minutes left, an hour more of Saturday Night Live, and then a very special after show. So come on into our Zoom room. Go to globalpeacetribe.com. 
and register. It takes about a minute. Also, what's great is once we have your email address, we keep it to ourselves. We don't give it out. Um, but you will get notifications about how you can access replays. This is our 87th show. Plus, you can also access all of my previous Straight Talk shows, all my previous Sacred Sunday shows, and get notifications about our upcoming shows. And we're creating a lot of new things for the new year. So please join us. Go to GlobalPeaceTribe.com. I also want to acknowledge and thank all of our broadcast partners. Uh, many of you watch us on Unify, um, and we're really grateful for Unify. They uh, have been carrying us every Saturday night uh, for a long, long time now, for well over a year, and that's really made a big difference. So thank you, Unify. I um, also want to thank uh, my buddy Alan Steinfeld. He was on my Street Talk show last night, and he carries us on his YouTube channel, and all of our broadcast partners. Thank you very much. I also really want to thank those of you who have been donating to us. Um, and again, I'm going to pull it up. Thank you so much. Uh, your donations really mean a lot. Um, it makes a big, big difference. And um, again, it's kind of hard. It's so much easier for me to ask for money for somebody else. But uh, we really need to, uh, we want to continue this show. In fact, we need the donations to do so. Um, uh, so please do help us to continue. Uh, one of the things that I'm really proud of is some of the incredible speakers that have been on our show that love our show. And um, I'd love to share with you a video from Lynn Twist, uh, who, of course, has been one of our favorite speakers. She's the author of The Soul of Money. And um, this is a video that Lynn created for us that I want to share with you. Well, this is Lynn Twist. I'm the co-founder of Pachamama Alliance. I'm also the president of the Soul of Money Institute, and I've raised hundreds of millions of dollars for the things I believe in. I worked for the Hunger Project for many years, and I know many of you also know about that. And one of the things that I love to do is ask people for money for the things I care about. And I'm asking you right now to make a donation to Saturday Night Alive because things don't really run on air they run on money. Money is important and I know how much value and how much entertainment and how much nurturing and how much transformational education you and I receive from Saturday Night Alive and we owe it to ourselves to complete that cycle so that we are a contribution back to Saturday Night Alive. You know this is a world that will work really ultimately out of reciprocity, generosity, responsibility, and love. And that's, I know, who all of you are, or you wouldn't be involved in Saturday Night Alive, because that's who it draws. It draws people like you, it draws people like me, it draws people who are awake, people who care, and people who know that giving back is really important. And there's many ways of giving back, like sharing with everybody about Saturday Night Alive, but right now and today and in this moment, the giving back we're asking for, I'm asking for, is a financial contribution. And one that makes you more alive. <laughs> that makes you think, whoa, did I give that much? Did I give $500? Whoa, did I give $5,000? Oh, did I give $750? Did I give $2,000? Wow, I can't believe I did that. But it was worth it because what I get from it is so awesome, way more than what I contribute. So I invite you to make a contribution now. I invite you to go huge. I invite you to do something that makes you feel more alive so that we can keep Saturday Night Alive going forever. Thank you so much and just go for it. can even hear my dog is so excited. She's saying, donate, donate. Thank you, Lynn. Even my dog is excited about what's going on. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> to continue on, thank you everybody for your donations. It really does make a big difference. We're really grateful. 
And um, lest my dog continue to disturb us, um, I get to turn it over to those wonderful brothers, Corinne. Wow, what a blessing to have them with us. And um, here they are with, uh, tell us guys about what you've got for us next. Oh, bef thank you so I'm much. Unmuted. Are we unmuted? <laughs> yeah. no, thank you so not. much. I just want to say, Sarita, uh, wow. It's like we've met our sister in song and voice. <laughs> thank you for your work, yeah, for, you know, with women and the world. So, Reflection. Um, yeah. yeah. So kindred. <laughs> it's amazing. I love hearing your accents too. I know. My I wife's from Perth. Home. We're from Adelaide. Yeah. Oh, uh, Adelaide. Right <laughs> yeah. Singing. Fantastic. Well, well thank well, you. We'll, we'll, we'll see you soon, hopefully. We'll definitely collaborate more on this beautiful, um, so much kindred mission. So it's so beautiful. You know, that's one of the wonderful things that's happened on this show. Mm -hmm. So many people have met each other. Um, uh, there's a wonderful artist who's been on our show many times named Cornflower another one named Kristen Hoffman. And they had heard of each other, they met through Saturday Night Live, and now they collaborate together. Um, and so it's it's beautiful because we're all meeting each other um, and then finding ways that we can co-create and collaborate, you know, separate from Saturday Night Live. So I love the idea of um, the three of you all connecting. That's great. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Lovely. And Vision. Paul Draper, just wow. magic, magic. We were, magic. For, you know, what, what an incredible, what an incredible space for you held for us all. Thank you for that, Paul. <laughs> yes. Uh, we, I want and, more. And that, that commitment to the unknowable space. Mm. We walk out of here and we don't know where we go and what will, what will happen. But uh, we, we do know that we have this compass of gratitude that like a good doctor here beautiful beautiful um dr wade incredible heart space um you're reminding us that in any hardship in any moment we can come back to the gravity of gratitude mm. and uh in this in this song that we're going to sing we we hope to to hold you all in that space mm. why don't we hit that heater off because oh, it makes some noise uh this song was written 20 years ago isaac and i uh followed our wild mother across the seas to, to New York City uh, from Australia. And um, she was in the original touring cast of Hair. And we both as brothers got into music separately. And uh, we wrote this as part of a first batch of songs. And so we still sing it to this day. And uh, we're, we're more grateful than ever to get to do what we do, to, to see people like return to their voices and uh, realize it's it, voice is not just meant to be for some, it's meant to be for everyone, mm. and that everyone's just been waiting to have permission. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this this song kind of is another invitation again to um, let yourself return to the instrument that you have. It's called thankful. How have we have we come to this? When all I've ever seen is you, my friend. that wind my feet were taken off the ground but did yours or did your wings come out we better stop and be thankful for the gifts we Stop and be in this moment for tomorrow's too far away. Broken words heed broken ways. And I'm thirsty with desire. I lost for fire and I yearn to change mm. With your wings, take us separate ways mm. Or may we dare to shame anew Ooh. We better stop and be thankful 
Just be, people are crying in the chat wow. box talking about they're crying and uh, and so I want to use this as a moment actually to just kind of pitch next week's show um, and you guys wrote a special song for Marcy in the Miracle Zone tell us a little bit about that oh we had this the great pleasure to finally make it to a, a year of miracles event with Marcy and. Lisa and you know we had such an incredible time being with them. We have and Dr. Sue and Dr. Sue. We get to go into rooms of people, virtual and in person, and help write anthem with their community, write song, the collective song. And so we got the chance to do it with Year of Miracles. And this song popped out called uh, "The Miracle Zone." Living in the Miracle Zone. Living in the Miracle Zone. We're going to come and sing it and uh, celebrate that experience next week. It's se it's second ever performance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, it, it's it's going to be great. And I'm just going to take a minute. We'll come back to you guys in a second. Don't go away. But since we're talking about it, this is our show next week. I will be showing the promotional video for it in a few minutes. But, um, uh, oh, whoa, that's, no, that's this week. There we go. Let me get the right one. Um, next week is December 4th. You know, when you've done 87 of these, <laughs> uh, we've got an amazing show next week. We, you're going to have the Brothers Corrin doing their song that they just described. We've got Marianne Williamson coming back. Um, the wonderful Marcy Shimoff. And Marcy is going to be our co-host next week. And she is the miracle goddess and a longtime friend of mine. Dr. Sue Mortar, who you just spoke of, the cigar. And we've got David Pramal and Meaton coming back. So amazing music. And Karen Drucker. So next week's show is going to be one of the best shows that we've done. Uh, just every single person is an amazing luminary. So don't miss it. And um, I will be showing the uh, promotional video for that. And looking forward to having you guys on next week. We're thrilled. But, but again, I want to one more time just take people to what you're going to be doing on the Shift Network. Um, and we're putting that into the chat box. Um, yes. And tell us a little bit about what's happening on Tuesday. Yeah, so Tuesday, we, we're going to be doing a live event. Uh, we love doing our live events with Stephen Dynan of the Shift Network. It's such a great experience. It's really about bringing people into uh, the opportunity to be in a voice experience like, like you have been born to be in. And we, we believe in the sacred power of, of every single human voice alive today that we have this opportunity to come home to this whole body instrument, as we call it and fall back in love with how music hits you, um, how your story can um, give a pathway to the most fascinating, fascinating songs that are waiting to be written like soundtrack of your life. But in this course, it's really about forming a new, healthy, really beautiful relationship with your voice. Maybe it's something you've been terrified to do. Well, we, uh, we specialize in the terrified. <laughs> and um, we, we love helping people form a new juicy relationship to sounding out what that it feels like to be them. And we really find that on the other side of that expression, that singing um, is immense joy and gratitude, connection, empowerment, uh, and just so much liberation, truly. And, and it's quite surprising to, to a lot of people that do this work. Oh, I didn't expect the... the the voice that there's so much in the voice there so there'll be voice experiences and it's of course free this tuesday coming we hope all of you join us and uh 
it's been such a pleasure being with you. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thanks again. Gentlemen, thank you so much. It's been great meeting you. And uh, I'm just so delighted to know that you're on our planet doing what you're doing and part of Saturday Night Alive. Thank you thank so you. much, guys. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Oh, aren't they beautiful? Wow. Just such beautiful souls on this show. Well, speaking of beautiful souls, I get to introduce our next presenter. I mean, again, um, she's super popular, super famous. It was kind of amazing that we were able to get her to be on our show. Um, but she was really delighted and excited. And um, after, after you hear her speak, um, we're going to offer a really cool free gift that she's providing. And I'm talking about Nierka. She's a transformational leader and a master coach who guides us to elevate the way that we think, speak, and live. She was um, partnered with Tony Robbins for five years and has shared the stage not only with Tony, but with almost all of the renowned new thought leaders, Brendan Bouchard, Deepak Chopra, Michael Beckwith, who's going to be on our show again in a couple of weeks. You know, it's all one big happy family, really. She's a master trainer of evolved neurolinguistic programming and of hypnotherapy. She's worked with corporations all around the world. She's amazing. And so with no further ado, um, let me uh, put the spotlight on the video and introduce you to Niyurka. I'm so grateful to be here at Saturday Night Alive to share with you the immense power of gratitude. When we live with gratitude, we're truly rich. I mean, this enhances every aspect of our experience of life to live with sincere appreciation. And I remember there was a time in my life where I was not vibing in gratitude. Actually, the opening line in my book, Supreme Influence, is that I embarked on a quest at 15 years old for freedom, truth, and enlightenment, except back then I called it running away from home. I remember being so frustrated inside and struggling, but I knew that I was destined for more than what was showing up. And the portal that opened the door to a whole new insights, whole new realizations and new powers of beginning to attract the people, places, opportunities and experiences that were in alignment with my true purpose was through the power of gratitude. And what is gratitude? It's a living in sincere appreciation and thanksgiving. And it's not a mood or a fleeting emotion. It's a state of consciousness. It's a state of being. It's a vibration. It's a frequency. And this is why this teaching is so essential, because we are vibrational beings. And what we attract is what matches our vibe. There's a big difference between someone who's vibing in a state of doubt or lack or fear or stress or not enoughness, or someone who's vibing in a state of joy, gratitude, prosperity, love. And I know that sometimes this could be a challenge because you're looking out in the world and there's so many things, or you're looking out at your life. And there's so many things that can appear to be a struggle or a challenge. And I can relate with you and be present with you in that. What gratitude does is it enlightens and awakens our mind. It empowers us to rise above reactive states of consciousness and enter creative states of consciousness. See, through gratitude, we rise above reaction, which I call association associative thinking where something can trigger you and you end up losing yourself in the moment to rising into states from reaction or association to contemplation where we begin to contemplate the awe the wonder the beauty the blessings the miracles that are all around we rise from association to contemplation to concentration this is where we begin to focus our energy on the blessings, focus our energy on what we're so thankful for into states of meditation. And I don't mean meditation like we're just sitting in lotus position. I mean living in a meditative state where we recognize and we live in the joy of the recognition of the flow of the energy, the unity that flows in, as, and through all existence. This is the power of gratitude. It literally opens and enlightens our mind. It opens and awakens our heart. 
and it tunes us into all that is wonderful and all that is great and all that is good. And what we attract is what matches our vibration. So I'd love to give you a few gratitude practices because it's easy to appreciate the blessings in our lives. And actually scientifically, we know that when we gratitude journal, and I recommend doing it in the evening uh, before going to bed at night, first thing in the morning, you can journal the things that you're grateful for. We literally begin to create new neural pathways in our brain that signal to us that this is the frequency that we're in. Now that's easy to focus or it can be easy to focus on the blessings. Here's the other thing, gratitude in the midst of the challenges, to be able to see beyond the challenge and to tune in to what is the gift in this? What is the blessing? What can I learn from this? What is a new awareness that will bring a whole new pathway into being? So we begin to have an elevated inquiry or contemplation with ourselves. And as we come into asking these higher vibrational questions, like what is the gift in this? What is the insight? New insights are received. And here's another insight, even have appreciation and gratitude for the things that you desire that are not present yet. A lot of times I see people, they desire something in life, like they desire an intimate relationship. They desire success in their business. But when they look at other people who are living the full embodiment of what they desire, they have judgment or they have criticism about that. Look at that person, you know, living with all of this excess, but yet they're calling in greater prosperity in their life. So one powerful insight is appreciate the things that you desire in life, recognize them in others with gratitude and appreciate. As you do, you become a magnet to your genuine desires. Ultimately, gratitude is about living in the full embodiment of our authentic nature. It's us living in alignment with who we really are. And who we are is the expression of the consciousness the life force energy that animates all existence, the same life force that, as Marianne Williamson says, turns embryos into babies and causes seeds to turn into flowers, the same consciousness that births universes into existence is the source of our life. And as we tap in with gratitude, with awe, with wonder, with appreciation, with joy, we become a magnet and we uplift everyone and everything around us. We literally become the thermostat where we walk into any room and if there's frequencies of density or doubt or stress, we become the thermostat that can uplift, that can heal, that can bring a new realization and enlightening enthusiastic energy. And when you change, when you bring this energy of gratitude into the space, everything shifts in light of your clear and present reflection. It's like I say, when you change, the world around you changes. You have that much power. So after we did this first uh, presentation with her, I said, well, would you be willing? She, she didn't realize that she had time left. So I asked her if she would be willing to do a practice. And she said, yes. So I have a second video that I'm going to play now which is her practice for us and then stick around because there's a free gift that she's given to all of us that's going to be really cool for me to share with you but here's the practice so here's a powerful practice to amplify gratitude in your life first realize how you move influences how you feel so sit up tall in your chair, wherever you are right now. If you're sitting, if you're standing, you can stand tall. Elongate your spine and open up the heart center and allow yourself to be lifted. It's like you're feeling lifted from the heavens above and just relax. And you're gonna inhale a deep rejuvenating breath. And actually one wonderful place to do this practice is in nature. So if you can go out to nature and bring your device with you and we can go out together, nature is an amazing wisdom keeper. Bringing gratitude and feeling the awe and wonder in nature begins to elevate your frequency into these higher realms. So go into nature, take off your shoes, put your feet on the ground so you can feel into the core of mother earth. As we feel into the beating heart, 
of Mother Earth. It's like she gives us everything she has. So feeling in nature the love we have for the Earth, the love we have for all life, for the stars, for the animals, and feel into the beating of your heart the love that you have for all nature as you elongate the spine, open up the heart center, allow yourself to be lifted, feeling into the frequency of this love and inhale a deep rejuvenating breath. And as you do, just feel the life force energy filling every cell within your being. Gratitude for the breath of life, the spirit, the prana, the ruach, the life force energy. And as we inhale, we inhale gratitude and love, and we'll do one together. We'll inhale a few breaths together. And as we exhale, just release all the cares of the day. Release any energies that have been weighing you down. Release any energies that have been uh, feeling heavy or dense. Just allow the breath to move that energy out of the cells and alchemize it. This is the power of alchemy. So alchemy is the transmutation of anything that has showed up as lead in your life, anything that has been heavy and dark or dense. We're bringing it out of the shadows through this practice and into the light. We're shining the light of illumination, the light of your highest awareness, the, high, the light of your divine self, and darkness dissolves in the presence of the light. So we don't have to fight the darkness. You don't have to push away from the darkness. We just flip on the switch, which is the light of your gratitude, the light of your love, the light of your higher awareness. So sitting up tall, it's like we're walking into nature. And if you can't walk into nature, walk into nature in your mind, in your mind's eye. And go ahead and go in and feel, if you could put your feet on the ground even better, feel in to the heart of Mother Earth as you feel a sense of expansion. So you're simultaneously grounded all the way into the heart of Mother Earth and simultaneously feeling a sense of expansion as you're being lifted from the heavens above. And feel that expansion and just gently close your eyes. You can put a little smile on your face like the smile of the Buddha, the smile of innocent love. And as you inhale, just in, imagine this brilliant light coming in as you inhale gratitude. Ready, deep breath in, appreciation. You're inhaling the appreciation for nature, appreciation for the sun, the soil, everything that grows, the people in your life, just feel the appreciation, fueling, inspiring, uplifting, energizing, rejuvenating, elevating every cell within your being. And just pause for a moment, honoring this space, between the breaths, just like with music, it's the space between the notes that makes the music. And then as you exhale, just release all the cares of the day, any frequencies that do not serve you, any doubts or stresses, just let the air, the spirit, the life force, just move that energy out, just transmuting filling every cell within your being with radiant light, radiant love, pure gratitude, divine presence. Ha! And in this state is where you'll receive insights from your highest self, wisdom from the higher realms, new realizations that inspire you to powerfully ha! move forward in your life through who you are being. Hmm, deep love. So much gratitude. I am grateful for you. I'm grateful for this sacred time together, this magical time together, this magical time of gratitude here at Saturday Night Alive. Woo! Well, she's pretty awesome, isn't she? I love her energy, just incredible energy. And okay, here it is. So this is a free gift that in the past they've always uh, sold to people. Um, and it's the Supreme Influence uh, series of videos. So what happens is you go to the link that uh, we're putting into the chat box. And all you have to do is register. Um, and of course, she's going to get your email address that way. Um, and if you want VIP updates, put in your cell number. And she's going to send you the gift. And the gift is this. Four modules. They're all videos 
Um, normally, the in the past, you'd always sold these, but the modules are how to influence yourself, upgrading our mind's operating system, supreme influence, modeling our possibilities, driving our life, the hidden blueprint, and how to transform any current state into a desired state. And finally, how to create our own experience of reality. So these are all things that you can get by registering. Um, and just again, use the link. I'm going to put it in the chat box. I think Susie has it as well. Um, yeah, I see that Susie's putting it in there. Good job. Thank you, Susie. Um, and uh, let's all take advantage of these incredible wisdom from people like Brenda Wade and Nyurka. I mean, these are women who have spent decades researching and studying how we can really optimize our life experience. So let's take advantage of these incredible opportunities that they're providing us. All right, I think it's time for some more magic. Here's Jan. Thank you. And wow, Paul Draper is back. What? And I yeah, it's come back so quick. How did he how did he get here so fast? <laughs> wow. Okay. He's amazing. You know, in every rainstorm, in every rainstorm, we always have to look out, of course, right, for uh, for that little bit of rainbow to remember the happiness that will return and is there. Now, I want somebody to help me out. We had somebody who was going to help me out. Who was it? The most rainbow-colored person in the world. Hello! Good to see you. I loved hearing you sing. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Paul. Thank oh, you. I'm I need you to help me. Now, you have you me. seen the American Avengers movies? I don't believe I have. No, you haven't seen them. It's okay. It's okay. I'm going to help you. I have a set of Avengers playing cards. Why? Because every, every child man who loves the Avengers has to have Avenger playing cards. And on them, they have different superheroes. Like this is Iron Man there, or, or back there, there's a, there's a, a Thor there. But I have all sorts of different uh, histories and stories. And I have a prediction over here. I have a prediction over here. It's okay if you don't know them, we're going to find an Avenger to help you. All I need you to do is memorize all these cards in the exact order that they're currently in. Do you got it? Perfect. Excellent. Okay. So I have a prediction right there. I'll spread these out. I'll spread these out. Now, we didn't set up anything beforehand, did we? No, I have no, no idea. <laughs> Anytime you want, say stop. Stop. Right there. I'm going to pull out the card right where you said stop. You could have chosen any of these, but you didn't. I have a prediction right there. You chose. You chose. It's a guy with a bow and arrow. Any idea? Any idea? New movie on Netflix? It's Hawkeye. It's Hawkeye. But this is the important thing. This is the important thing. Over here, I have a prediction that you will choose. It. Oh, no. Oh, no. It says, it says you'll choose Ant-Man. Choose Ant-Man. You know, because sometimes when things look really big, we need to look small. Because right there on the tip of the arrow, helping out, you always have to be grateful for Ant-Man. Do you see Ant-Man on the tip of the arrow, the little teeny guy? There he is. There okay, he is. this is... <laughs> this is where I'll have you help me with something you can do. Now, where in the world do you live? That's this is where I'll have you help me. With... Oh, uh oh, there's my voice double. <laughs> there's a second me. Where, where in the world do you live? In Los Angeles. In Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Land of opportunity. How's your script coming? The... <laughs> That's... That's I'm one of my favorite. On a script. Not yet, anyway. Not yet. <laughs> you, you know, I stand at Starbucks in Los Angeles, and everyone that walks through the door, I say, "How's your script coming?" And they all have an answer. I have one. I have one of my business cards right here. Now, what I'm going to do in my business card case, I'm going to scribble down a three-digit number on the back of this business card. Any number from one to a thousand. Now, hopefully, you and I can connect. I'll be very grateful if we do. Let's try it out. First digit in the hundreds place, it can be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What's the first digit? Three. Now, are you saying that because I'm holding up three fingers? No, because it's probably because it's my favorite number. 
your favorite number. Perfect. What's the second number that comes to mind? Tell it to me now. Six. Six, which is two sets of three. Very good. Now, out of 999 numbers, 360 what? What's the final number? Three. 363. 363. Out of a thousand numbers, you chose 363. What do you think the chances are that on the back of this business card is scribbled 363? No way. Very low chance. Very <laughs> low chance. But if we got close, we got close. We got 363, your number. What? How did you know you're psychic? I. <laughs> You're psychic. No, I need to bring you to every show. You're so good at this. Let's give a round of applause. Thanks so much for helping me out. No way. No way. <laughs> when I was when I was little, the uh, the first thing that uh, that I uh, I worked on a farm. I worked on a ranch, and we had chickens. And my very first job was going out each morning, picking up the chicken and pulling out an egg. Every chicken had one egg. Very rarely did you have a chicken with two eggs. They have one egg, just like that. You see the egg? And you have to go out each morning and collect those eggs. And then you get, wait a minute, there's two eggs. Every day you go out and collect the eggs. Every chicken gives you one egg, so you have enough eggs. Wait, there's three eggs. You have to go out and make sure to get enough eggs for the family, just like that. Eventually the chickens are grateful to see you because that's when you also bring them a little food, just like that, three, four eggs. Every day the animals are happy to see you. You know the animal that's happiest to see in the morning? I apologize to the vegans out there, the cow. The cow is happy to see you because it's in pain and you gotta milk it. Well, I have one more piece of magic to share that's fun. This is based on uh, a story of a philosopher in uh, who lived in Turkey when Turkey was ruled by the Greeks in a town called Ephesus, and his name was Heraclitus. He's famous for the line, you can't step in the same river twice, because the idea is that the river keeps flowing and you stick your foot in it, and the water that your foot was in is now hundreds of miles downstream. So for that, I'm going to show you an ancient piece of magic that was written about in a book in the Library of Alexandria. Now, they would have used a bottle of Alexandrian glass, but the museum won't let me bring home Alexandrian glass, so I have a milk bottle from my family farm. So here we go. I'll fill this up with water all the way to the top. And then put this down on the ground. This is to make the vegans happy. I'm not wasting milk. I'm using water. I put the uh, that down on the ground down there. Now we can't step in the same water, the same river twice, because time keeps flowing by. But we can remember the happiness in the past, and we can pause and savor a moment. We can slow it down by enjoying it and seeing it, or let it rush on by. If I turn this bottle over, all the water is going to pour out into that pitcher that I put down below me. The second I move my hand, it just flows. And that's how life feels Whoop! sometimes, is it just flows, just like this. But I want you to pause it for me. Everyone wiggle your fingers at the water and make the water pause. Wiggle your fingers, three, two, one, pause. And sometimes life goes fast, flow, pause. And we allow ourselves a little time to be in nature and we experience nature and we experience this moment of love. And then we have to go back to work where it flows, pause. And we hold on to just the briefest moment, the briefest moment to remember the beauty and the things that we're grateful for before we have to move on to our next adventure. Sometimes people leave you halfway through the wood. Thank you so much for all of you for letting me meet you here for a moment in the wood. Oh, thank you, Paul. It's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. I love your energy and <laughs> all that you're hearing. Really, you're just fantastic. People are twinkling away. So, um, again, remember, everybody, that we can find out everything we've always wanted to know, but we're afraid to ask by going website at pauldraper.com hey look it's pre-pandemic me before i was gray in my beard <laughs> <laughs> that's right paul i know you'll be back on the show again soon thank you so very very much thank you everybody great show god's blessings take care and thank you for the all the service work that you do paul i really appreciate that a lot what a good guy huh all right it's time for our last presenter 
Um, and again, it's an, a video presented a video presentation. Um, and let me tell you a little bit about uh, this was somebody that uh, wonderful Jan found Louis Schwartzberg. He's an award winning cinematographer, director, producer, and he has spent his notable career providing breathtaking imagery using time lapse high speed cinematography techniques. Most of you may have seen his 3D IMAX movies like Mysteries of the Unseen World. Um, he did a lot of stuff for Disney Nature, but he's probably most famous for his uh, Netflix show about the fantastic fungi. It opened in local theaters throughout the United States, got rave reviews, and is one of the most popular films on Netflix. He's also directed the Soarin' Around the World um, ride at Disneyland. It's a motion simulator ride. So anyway, Jan uh, did an interview with him about gratitude um, because that's um, the subject of a new movie and video that he's doing. So here's what took place when Jan talked to Louie. Thank you, Louie, for joining us tonight and today on uh, Saturday Night Alive for the Global Peace Tribe. So um, your work has been so inspiring to so many people. And I'm just wondering your source of inspiration. Did nature find you? Did you find nature? How did you get to where you are today? Well, I thank you very much. It's, it's great to be here with you, Janice. Um, I discovered nature when I really got into photography. Um, that happened at UCLA. I was a poli-sci history major. Um, I started to film the anti-war protests. I found out it was easier for me to hand in a uh, photo essay than a term paper. And I fell in love with photography and that's when I found my voice. And once I fell in love with photography and filmmaking, then nature became my greatest teacher because she taught me everything about lighting, composition, texture, movement, and taught me how to live a, a creative life and, um, and be able to afford it. That's great. And nature is a, an amazing teacher. And the power of gratitude is our topic tonight. And some of your work really just addresses this straight on. Um, where are you uh, finding this gratitude? What are you grateful for? And how, how can we be more grateful? I think we can all be more grateful by appreciating the little things in life. And part of that for me came from my journey of growing up with parents who were Holocaust survivors. So they were just grateful for food on the table, a roof over their head, a steady job, the miracle of having children. And that translated really into this whole ethos of being an environmentalist, you know, caring about the little things, the bees, the bats, the hummingbirds, the pollinators, the fungi that enables soil to be created. It gives us the fruits, the nuts, the vegetables, and the seeds, everything we need in order to have healthy food and have a have a, a healthy life. So um, it's interesting how appreciating the little things in life is the foundation of life. And therefore, I'm super grateful for the little guys, because when you're grateful for the foundation of life, then I think you're actually celebrating life. It's a spiritual journey that you can embrace. And it it's something that you can look forward to. And actually, it's, it's just a way to set your moral compass. Hmm. Would you say that gratitude is your spiritual practice? Do you have other spiritual practices uh, along with that? Or when you look at the miracle of life, and again, the films I make are about making the invisible visible. And so that is like looking at universal energy and the patterns of nature and life. And one could certainly say that it's a window into the divine, because I would, I would say that is more or less my definition of God. Um, you're understanding like what makes life go around. And by observing these rhythms and patterns from a both a scientific as well as an artistic point of view, then it puts you right into the zone of wonder. And wonder is a form of bliss. 
And when you're blown away by the miracle of the smallest little things that you are able to observe, well, then that engenders gratitude. And when you feel grateful for the little things in life, well, then you become an environmentalist and then it's just full circle. You're, you're appreciating nature. Nature makes you grateful for the fact that this is how life goes forward. And then when you feel that emotion, it, it triggers gratitude. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, your work with Paul Stamets is amazing. Your film, Fa Fabulous Fungi. Fungi, fungi. I'm not sure there's different ways to Actually, say Actually, uh, fantastic fungi. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And I think it's fabulous, yeah. but it's a, the movie is fantastic. <laughs> and um, so the working with the mushrooms and, and time lapsing uh, those amazing, you know, all the mycelial networks, was that uh, even more? I mean, I know you've done bees and beautiful flowers and beautiful landscapes and time lapse was working with the fungi was that uh extraordinary i mean tell, tell us a little bit about what that was like yeah. for you. well i mean technically it was certainly more challenging you know because fungi and mycelium is you know microscopically thick it lives underground there's no light so we you know, we did a lot of incredible techniques from time lapse to motion control to microscopic cinematography, and eventually you know down to CGI. But I feel like the you know beyond it the the technical part of it, it's just the story that is so compelling that you have this you know underground network, a shared economy living under the ground, not based on greed, for ecosystems to flourish which I believe is the perfect example of nature's operating instructions. So how do you tell that story? How do you tell the actual scientific story of the fact that everything is connected? Mm. And it's not a hippy dippy thing to say that. And the science proves that it is all connected by the you know, mycelial network underground that connects trees to one another and plants. Um, it's, the, it's, you know, a mother tree takes care of its babies um that story again opens your heart and when it opens your heart it triggers gratitude mm, beautiful and um i know that you're working on uh, a new film yeah. and uh we'd love to hear you know it went from what a six minute mm -hmm. uh video of gratitude and now you're doing is it a would it yeah. be a feature film it's going to be a feature film and um so back in 2014, I think I did a, a TEDx San Francisco talk where I showed my sizzle reel, my quote unquote trailer for gratitude. And I had no idea back then that like they put that stuff on YouTube and it went on YouTube, it went viral. So people can check it out. It's called Gratitude by Louis Schwartzberg. And um, to me, that was sort of a litmus test in a way. I mean, could I make something that my teenage daughters wouldn't roll their eyes and go, Dad, you're so corny. Um, and the feedback I got from young people was they were blown away by it. You know, that it, it they use it as a, uh, a meditation to line themselves every day, kind of turned it into a practice, which is so beautiful. And so during COVID, I wasn't able to go out and film. And I have this large library of almost 2,000 hours of material. So I've woven together a feature length film about gratitude where you see not only the beauty of nature but slice of life you know cinema verite moments with remarkable but ordinary people um you know jazz player dairy farmer um as well as some you know thought leaders like you know deepak chopra or norman lear our producer brian grazer jack cornfield um brother david uh lynn twist you know, lots of um, thought leaders, but there's, you know, those are little vignettes that are um, interwoven with these words of wisdom and music and nature. And um, I, I, I'm hopefully going to take people on a journey uh, from people who have overcome adversity, yet have hope in their lives and are therefore grateful. Uh, a great sequence by, by daughter shot of women coming out of jail uh, living in a halfway house 
And Laura, my daughter, taught them with this other, you know, um, instructor how to do stand-up comedy in order to build self-esteem, you know. Wow. And um, wow. so there are stories like that, as well as people that have achieved amazing things in their own craft or career, and you know, talking about how grateful they are for that as well. Oh, well, boy, we sure are grateful for you in our world <laughs> and helping us to see all these things that really are imperceptible, imperceptible to the average eye. So um, your work is beautiful. And I do uh, I hope that everybody, you know, watches your moving arts series on Netflix and thank sees you. all your YouTube videos. And so thank you so much for being here with us today. Well, thank you, and uh, may the sports be with you. <laughs> so everybody, check out Fantastic Fungi on Netflix. Well, while uh, he was doing that wonderful presentation, I've been in contact with Dr. Brenda Wade, and I've got two very important things to share with you. First of all, here is where you can get the information on the free book and event the five worst love mistakes and how you can avoid them. Uh, so I'm taking that link and I'm gonna pop it in the chat box um, and definitely check it out. Uh, and that's gonna be taking place on Wednesday, December 15th. It's an online event from four till 6 p.m. And she has agreed to be on my Sacred Sunday show on my first available date, which was Sunday, December 19th. So Sunday, December 19th, Dr. Wade is going to be my sole guest. I'll just keep it to her and I. Um, and you coming in because Secret Sunday shows are always very interactive. Um, so we're really excited about that. All right, we are almost to the end of the main show. Uh, and I am going to um, uh, bring back Sarita to give us a little closing song. Sarita, thank you so much for coming back on. And... Uh, closing out our main show thank you scott thank you everyone this is just so good <laughs> to be with you all um i'm gonna close with a song that's actually called gratitude that um i wrote from his place of i'd been feeling um guilty i think because of you know the privilege and the access that i have been blessed with in my life and um the realization that guilt is no good Guilt doesn't serve you and it doesn't serve all our brothers and sisters who don't have as much privilege or access as we do. So this is uh, actually, you know, to have access to running water and to have access to food. And I just wanted to shout out real quick. I just found out a friend told me about a project called NavajoWaterProject.org. I think it's so important that those of us who live on this land known as the US or known to many as Turtle Island, um, the Indigenous people are still, you know, living um, well on the Navajo reservation, only 30% of families have access to running water. So NavajoWaterProject.org, um, you can go and, you know, sponsor a tap and a sink or a toilet and, you know, yeah, so I just wanted to shout that out real quick. <clears throat> May we all do what we can with what we have to make this planet better for all life. Well, I am so, so lucky. This life I'm living, where every decision is a luxury and I'm free to walk, to ride, to run from one end of the planet to another and beyond if my heart desires. Yes, it's on fire, burning, churning every day. I'm learning what it means to be in this wealthy minority and I can't help but ask why me, why me, why me, I conclude. Oh, with gratitude that I got to make the most of this opportunity to give thanks, yes, for my circumstance. Bow to spread the love to the best of my ability. I conclude oh, with gratitude that I got to make the most of this opportunity to give thanks, yeah, for my circumstance. Bow to spread the love to the best of my ability. Say, oh, 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 hey, yeah. Ooh, oh, woo. If you want to sing along with me, I'm going to do a little call and response. Oh, 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 hey, yeah. Oh, 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 hey. Well, 
don't take it for granted overindulge bold waste time living our life not our lives yeah hardly living you know it's all about giving to yourself your family community and beyond make healthy bonds with those around and cherish the special connections you found in their bound to grow in strength we need it to get us through inspire each other with what we can do to make this a better place to be and keep on going to every brother and sister is free yes oh 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 i conclude oh with gratitude that i got to make the most of this opportunity I give thanks yeah for my circumstance about to spread the love to the best of my ability i conclude Oh, with gratitude that I got to make the most of this opportunity. I give thanks, yeah, for my circumstance. About to spread the love to the best of my ability. Say, oh, 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 hey, yeah. Ooh, oh, 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 hey. Are you singing? Ooh, oh, 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 hey, yeah. Ooh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 hey, as a world of chaos is turned upside down, be still within, listen to the sound of the life force pumping through the air and through the ground. This is our chance, our power is now to celebrate, create for life is precious and to be embraced in the face of fear. Have faith and pray, gather your energy, we all need to hear, I conclude up with gratitude that i got to make the most of this opportunity I give thanks yeah for my circumstance about to spread the love to the best of my ability i conclude oh with gratitude that i got to make the most of this opportunity I give thanks yeah for my circumstance about to spread the love to the best of my ability say who I oh, oh, oh hey yeah who I Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 Thank you so much, Serena. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, we're at 830, so I have to wrap us up. But I just want to remind everybody that she's got a wonderful website. You can register for the great event she's got coming up on Tuesday. Go to thejoyofsong.com. And then if you just go down, everybody, let's make sure we register uh, to participate. And um, Serena, you are wonderful. We are going to bring you back much sooner than we did last time it's thanks for reminding us how how awesome you are thank you what a joy what a pleasure thank you mm -hmm. we have a really fun after show coming up and here is a 45 second preview It's 8.30. That means it's Jay Mayer after show time. And so I want to thank everybody for watching. Um, and uh, I'm going to start recording now the new after show. And I'm going to turn it over to your host for the night for the rest of the evening, Jay Mayer. <clears throat> it's here, you guys. Jay, it's on you, you know.
do the old unmute. Welcome to the after show. I hope you all could hear the music on that last one. Uh, wasn't that great? Boy, you know, this is time well spent getting our hit of uh, the good juju from Saturday Night Alive. Uh, so it's really great to be here. This is our, our third after show, I think, possibly the fourth one. <laughs> uh, it's hard to keep track. Everything comes so quickly. Uh, I'm Jay Mayer, your host, and uh, we usually start out with prayer. And one of the things that we do, it's, uh, it's a regular feature in the after show. It's called Some Zen. And so we're going to do some Zen right here for you for one second as we start. Let's see, uh, share a screen with you. And then I'll introduce our guests. some great uh, guests here to share with you tonight. I'm very excited to have them uh, here. Uh, this show is, is brought to you by Light Touch, which is came out right around the same time, Gl Global Peace Tribe. We started getting a global audience, and it's really exciting to bring Light Touch to the world. And uh, I'm going to bring up uh, Missy Galore and introduce her. Uh, we use feather wands with Light Touch, and Actually, you know, roundabout, you know, Missy turned me on to to the whole. Well, she, calls, she calls it fluffing, fluffing your aura, you know, fluffing the future, fluffing the past. I'm sure she can tell you more about it better than me. But we use feather wands to activate our electromagnetic energy systems, so we can send requests to the invisible realms. Would you like to say hello there, Missy? Hi, greetings, beloved people. I'm so grateful okay. to be here sharing these heart breaths with this community. Very special to come back to the heart and connect with that infinite love spark that we all share. I created this um, download of ecstatic aura fluffing several years ago to heal from some pretty difficult situations in my life. And what I found was that, you know, all my suffering was not really transmuting the situation. It was all up to me to form my recalibration. And in meditation, spirit did teach me the song to fluff the goodness, fluff it up, fluff the goodness, fluff it up. Fluffing the goodness takes constant attention. Goodness itself has no form or dimension. It's always moving around in time. And the more we fluff it, the better the vibe. The more we fluff it, the better the vibe. So. Here we are in this moment today where we help support each other, fluffing the goodness for all of reality. 
And it's not that the tool is the answer, but rather the amplifier of the expression to help focalize our energy and move our stuck yuck with laughter and love so we could come back to the happiness that we deserve and be the true love light that is our destiny in life. Very nourishing when we can share in a song that like this amazing global peace tribe and I thank you all for incarnating and being alive. And sometimes we're in a personal place and these astral hygiene smile stimulation technologies help set the pace to refresh and re-bless the line, heart, and mind. Remember the gift of life that all is divine. And this practice has been so very powerful to me. I shared it as song and workshops and galactivation stations. And in this COVID experience where I've had to come and slow down in my personal way, I've crafted a whole new series of crystal fluff wands that I can share with you today made of selenite and Lemurian quartz and heart out love to empower your techniques and be the cosmic hug to bridge the sweetness throughout all space and time in service to our revolution. Grateful we shine. Been really special. I, I have no two shot, Scott. Can you give me a two shot with Missy there? You are on a two shot. I'm seeing a two shot. No, you're on a really? two shot. You've been on a two shot for the last few minutes, Jay. Really? Well, it says speaker view here for me, so I'm not. I'm not seeing it. Yep, you're on a two shot. Can, can I be the host or co-host? Am I set up to co-host here? You are. There you go. Okay, because I have to be able to control so we can get the two shot and three yeah. shot. You know? Just so you know, you are on a two shot right now, so you may need to adjust your uh, what you're seeing. I'm on speaker view here, and I just see myself. That, okay, well, can, can I see? Uh, now I'm cooked. Now I've got a. Okay, all right. This show business, ladies and gentlemen. So now, now I can add a pin. Okay. I'm going to show you, well, first I'm going to add a, a Fanny and Vagari. They're going to be, come on and, and play some music uh, after and talk to us real soon. And uh, we're going to play a Missy Galore song right now that I'm really excited to share with everybody. And I think you're going to like it as much as I do. So... Uh, Let's uh, let's get this share a screen. That's like what they do these days. Let's see. Uh, one second. Do you want to say hello, uh, Fanny, to our audience? Oh, okay. Here's the Miss, here's the Missy Galore video. Great. Uh, Okay, well, it's fun. We're going to show this video. It's called Levolution. And I filmed it over uh, many months traveling with some mermaid power. And I want to give some shout outs while Jay is setting this up because not only did he add some light touch blessings, but we had some real global peace tribe um, power with this. Uh, in addition to my beautiful sweetheart, Judson Neal filming, Alan Steinfeld did some guest filming for me when we were in Mexico on the UFO cruise with the Hertogs and Michael and Emma Tellinger did some filming. And so there's a lot of love from people who have showed up in Saturday Night Alive in different ways, uh, co-creating this celebration of love. And we're off.
All right. Good to be back. Uh, I'm going to jump in here for a minute. Uh, let me see. I need my control. I need control. Uh, I do this here. I do this every day. So, yes, I wanted to talk just for a second about light touch and light touch. Uh, I'm sure someone will put a link in the uh, chat box. Uh, light touch is, it's an opportunity to uh, invoke, you know, the ancestors, you know, invisible good higher beings, uh, the indwelling spirit that lives inside us. And one of the, what we do, we have a daily practice group and we're really wanting to expand, especially to the Global Peace Tribe. So we want to have more and more and more people. Uh, so we're all, we all pray and we all invoke for each other. And that really speeds things up when, when you have like 20, 30, 40, 50 people and we're all praying and invoking for each other. So maybe we could uh, take turns here, you know, say, say a couple of, uh, uh, say a couple prayers together and uh, I'm going to add some friends here. And so everyone that's listening, you know, you can you can bless all of our blessings. You know, if, if everyone in the global peace tribe blesses the global peace tribe, that's powerful, ladies and gentlemen, that's thousands of people blessing each other. And that's what changes the world is when we care enough, not just for ourselves, but for everyone. So uh, I might just start out here uh, first, and then we'll bring some other people up, uh, whoever would like to, uh, you know, join in. So this is the way it's done. For instance, uh, thank you for blessing everyone watching with your absolute best blessings. We thank you that you can allow us to receive the blessings. And I personally believe in the angels, you know, the invisible forces, just like I believe there's fish in the sea. That's how much I believe that there's angels in the invisible realms. And we call them forth, you know, to bless everyone and all of our thoughts and all of the secret desires of the heart that we can become the tribe that rises up and manifests, you know, our full potential, you know, while we're here. And to me, that's the excitement of the Global Peace Tribe, is that, that we can literally make a difference in the world. And we do that by uniting, you know, through sending out a good positive vibration. So one of my goals is to double our attendance, you know, as quickly as possible for the Global Peace Tribe and especially going into this new year. So I'm going to call up uh, Fanny and Vagari, and uh, maybe they'd like to uh, send some blessings out. May everyone be blessed. May our children be blessed. May our families be blessed. May our finances be greatly blessed. And, you know, that's salvation. You know, when salvation is not something that you're going to see when we die and all of a sudden we're saved. I don't believe that. I think it's like here and now. And that's uh, that's the way we can help the world is by, you know, rising up and putting love in our heart, celebrating. Oh, that's beautiful, Jay. 
you just yes. encompass everything that that is uh, miraculous. The blessings are miraculous. That's what changed the world. And I love in touch and I love in light. The blessings is so beautiful. Yes, we are all blessed. Greetings, everyone. Greetings to the world uh, global peace tribe. And um, here we are on the after show. And we're sending our best wishes to each and every one of you. Yes. So it is. More love, more health, more joy, more passion, more, more fun, more, you know, just go for your dreams. And that is the more you go, let go, and the more you let God. So bring it on, bring your joy on, just be. So oh, focus on the things you love and yeah. focus on the things that excite you yes. and the things that will bring joy to other people. Yes, 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 yes. And so it is, so it is. Yes. Uh, gonna invite Deborah Havlin up too. She's uh, just popped in. Uh, she's part of our prayer pod team and we've been praying together for decades, literally. <laughs> I met Deborah <laughs> in the 70s. But, would you like to send out some blessings to the Global Peace Tribe? And I would love that. Thank you so much. Yes, we have been praying together since our 20s, and we're 45 forever because we're so alive and turned on by these invocations. So anyway, hello, everybody. And, uh, you know, the invocations are so wonderful. It's like reaching into the universe to just connect with the creative source, power, energy, chi, the energy that created us, the energy that creates sunrises and sunsets and, you know, children being born and the joy of everything that people have been speaking about here. So we love to invo invoke certain seed thoughts that we all say together and it really energizes it. Uh, especially calling in miracles, miracles for everything wonderful that we want. You know, we call in divine appointments to meet the people that we're meant to meet that empower our life and our purpose and join with us in collaboration. We call in meaningful synchronicities and to notice them, to, to you know, really praying to be in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing thing so that we are just aligning with the highest vibrations of positivity and love and joy and light and with so much gratitude for everything that is given to us for this amazing life we are living and for our friendships and yes we meet daily i have been loyally doing this prayer pod with jay and and Jan and some of our other special friends literally daily for several years and uh, dedicated to the spiritual path since the day I was born. So the more we invoke and pray and feel our gratitude and so much gratitude for everything that is given, then it just pours in, you know, and and because like attracts like, and as we vibrate the goodness, we create more goodness in the world and more love. So thank you, everyone who's here. Thank you, Jay, for Light Touch. Thank you, Missy and Jan, and ah, so much love. I'm just flowing over with love, and it's wonderful to be here. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Deborah. And, uh, you know, it's it's really great. We do this every day. We're going to start a special group. Like there's the prayer pod, pr the practitioner training for people that want to teach people how to, how to heal your marriage with light touch, how to heal your finances with light touch, how to heal your children with light touch. You know, it's, it's just that people haven't really been taught that they have these magical powers within them. You know, Jesus tried to teach everyone. He said that everyone can do these miracles. Well, it starts with asking, you know, and, and if you get the more powerful ways that you can ask, 
Like I, I ask when I go to sleep at night. I go, oh, thank you for divine love in my finances. You know, right when you go to sleep and you believe it. You know, or I call it exponential financial blessings too. And uh, it really works because it's a friendly, loving universe and touch created us, right? Touch created us and parents were touching <laughs> and pleasurable sensations were occurring. So touch and pleasurable sensations. And this is a pleasurable sensation. You can ask any baby. You go like this with the baby or to a cat. Take a cat and go like this and they're like, oh yeah, they like it a lot. So, you know, <laughs> that's the beauty of light touch is, is that it's a, it's a real thing that they somehow they forgot to teach us in school. Uh, so, uh, do you want to play a song for us now, Fanny? Oh, we're okay. so ready for you, baby. We okay. have a song for you called Radiate This Sweet Loving. And I just, yes, we are. I just wanted to say something. Remember that we create our reality with our words. So everyone out there, when you greet someone, greet them with love, greet them and say, aloha, instead of hello, hell, <laughs> hell, hello, say aloha, bonjour, buenas noches, buena, buena, buena vista, buena. But remember what you say comes back to you so Let's erase the hell from our vocabulary, from our beings, and let's bring the aloha, baby. <laughs> so here we are. The song is called Radiate Your Love. Ready, baby? Ready. Here we go. Thank you. 
Well, thank you so much. That was so great. Thank you. Thank you. We're here. We uh, we did pre-records. We did a couple times and we had a great pre-record the other night and I just recorded it on Zoom and we were all set. And I went to load it into my, my editor and there was no audio track there. And I went, oh, <laughs> oh well. Let's do and, it. And that's the, it's the only time that that's ever happened. I've always, I've never had, like, a, it showed the video, but there was no audio. And three or three of the other things came through with, with the audio and the video. So that was a surprise. So th they're so great. I mean, they're, every time it just gets better. And uh, they perform live uh, for kids, <laughs> you know, and uh, they're really good. So. You know, if you have kids and you want to have a party and you're anywhere near Canada, you know, I'm sure they travel a few hundred miles for a few thousand dollars. So. Exactly. I'd say, show me the money, honey, and I'll be there for your party. I will liven up. And the cosmic bank account gets loaded because it's not all about the money. It's about the love, the true connection with the people and bringing on the love and light to the children and bringing our wisdom and being true to ourselves. And we are the teachers. So let's guide them well with our words, with our hearts. Yes, with ourselves. With ourselves. I'm, I'm also very, very, like, I can't tell you how excited I am because one of the passions that I've wanted to have is, you know, light touch for parents to heal their children. And then I wanted to have, like, light touch for children to heal their parents. So the children pray for their parents. Oh, thank you for blessing mommy and daddy. You know, help daddy yes. not to drink. Excellent idea. Yes, you know, it is. Because they're so powerful, these little ones. They're they're true God's representation. They're pure. They're they're just born. They're very close they're to the closer to their own authenticity than us grown-ups are. 
exactly so it goes faster yes mama we love you mama i wish you well mama mama and daddy will kiss tonight <laughs> they will hold hands and then they will be so much happier then there will be more time for us and more love for us and more love in the world the more we are you, loving yeah 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 you preserve a child's heart and their innocence and and you you keep them growing in that direction I mean, that can change the whole world, that kind right. of purity. Yes, and, it does. Uh, our, our natural state, you know. Our, yeah, our because they are our future, after all. They are the ones, I mean, we're the ones we've been waiting for, but what are we waiting? I mean, how, come on, <laughs> let's do it, people. But the kids are waiting on us to, to really, really shine it bright. They're ready. The kids have it all. Yeah. Uh, Great. Well, we have a couple other videos here. I'm very excited to present this next video. Uh, the award goes to, uh, let me see here. So I don't know if anyone here has ever heard of Baba Haridas, but Haridas Baba, but uh, he was, he was, he's been around and he was around in the seventies and he was around with Ram Das and, you know, those teachers at that yeah. time, he was in India. He's a genuine real life guru. And he hasn't spoken. When I met him in Santa Cruz in the 70s, he was talking talking on a chalk tablet. <laughs> and he had a following, a few hundred people who came to all his darshans. And uh, so this is a video of Haridas Baba doing hand mudras. And it's just wow. so beautiful to watch a master, just the way that they move their hands. You know, it's like, okay. So... I think you'll like this. Uh, see if I can bring it up to a, you. Uh, oh, okay, one second. And we're off. As, uh, as a Rosanna, Dana, she would say that's special. <laughs> Somebody would, that's really special stuff, I think. Uh, I met him, I met him in Santa Cruz and uh, 
you know, he, he was meeting people and, you know, he, he sleeps a few hours a night. So what, what do you eat? You know, he says, oh, you know, a banana. No? Okay. <laughs> but uh, you get, get real high when you don't eat too much. You know, like I do day fasting sometimes and boy, you get so high off of, you know, just even not, you know, breaking up the normal uh, eating patterns, I call it pattern interrupt. So uh, we've talked about growing the uh, light touch and anybody who's interested in, in light touch, please reach out to us and you can be prayed for and invoked together with others. And you'll see that everything speeds up when you call the angels into our entanglements, you know, which on the invisible realms, they're just like tight knots. You know, we're just tied, we're wound too tightly. And the angels can come in there and just kind of go, woo, you know, and, and loosen those knots. And, you know, a few evil spirits or negative space beings or something, you know, it gets better. And uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Uh, I came up with this name. I call it shamanic touching. And that's uh, because I used to say, touch yourself. You know, when you do light touch, you touch yourself, but it's, it's the light inside of us. And when I say touch yourself, like all these pictures come up with people. So I, I changed it to shamanic touching. You know, it kind of clarifies because uh, touching yourself is, is the way to invoke, you know, the uh, miracles. You know, it's all associated with touch. Everything is touch. You know, you want to go someplace, you touch your car. You want to wake up in the morning, you get out of bed, <laughs> brush your teeth. You want to have good teeth when you're old, you brush your teeth. So thank you for my sharing time. Anybody else want to share for a minute or two? Uh, uh, but I'll, I'll come right back to that because I wanted to play this video. Uh, Swing 60s is on the bill tonight uh that's that's my band with jan jan kaplan who hosted was a co-host of the last show so we're going to play a swing 60s video for everybody and uh hey, when very... you play that video can you put in people are asking for how they can join light touch oh okay uh, i'm in the different. middle of writing it right now i'm in the middle okay. of writing it so i'm taking care of it thank you <laughs> Yeah, great. Yeah, light, light touch is for you. You know, like it's part of the global peace tribe, the idea that, that we're not just one person, but that we're many. And, and the world needs this. You know, I, I'm so much more attracted to tribe than, you know, nuclear family. You know, nuclear family is great, but, you know, we, we all need love. You know, every, everyone here, you know, and we, we all need to rise up together. That's the salvation of the world, is that we all get saved. I think Christ comes through everyone <laughs> and the planet gets saved. So uh, keep saying your prayers in the meantime. And uh, I'm gonna play this, uh, this video for you. It's called, uh, what's the name of this video, Jan? Oh, sorry, because I'm answering. I'm directly responding to people. Um, it's, uh, oh, uh, shower the people you love with love. Shower the people you love with love. Right yeah. here. <clears throat> this is, like, uh, what, what do you call it when it's like a pre- Attitude and action. Yeah, this is Jan Kaplan singing. She is, uh, you'll recognize her. She looks just like that. And <laughs> here, this is her. And... and You can play the game And you can act out the part Even though you know it wasn't written for Tell me how can you stand there with your broken heart Ashamed of playing the fool One thing can lead to another 
another It doesn't take any sacrifice Oh, father, mother, sister and brother If it feels nice, don't think twice To shower the people you love with love Show them the way that you feel Things are gonna work out Shower the people you love with love Show them the way that you feel Things are gonna be much better if you only will You can run, but you cannot hide This is widely known And what you plan to do with your foolish pride when you're all by yourself alone once you tell somebody the way that you feel you can feel it beginning to ease i think it's true what they say about the squeaky wheel always get could all sing that at home in our living rooms we could all sing that Shower together. the people with love you love now make you feel shower the people you love with love shower the people you love the shower is full missy do you want to show them some, do you have any wands handy you could show us show us what you do well, she sells she makes these great wands some are like really affordable they're priced for that and other ones are are designed for people that really want a beautiful well you can tell them about it better than me oh and, uh, thank you jay i've got on either side of me this is the galactic fluff crystal wand altarpiece they each come with their own altar stand. Wow. Selenite handles. Wow. Wrapped with copper. 
Wow. These are the little like massage crystals and oh. I've done a combination here. This is a <laughs> cosmic prayer smile stimulation tool. So we're using the peacock feathers, which are known for their protection and seeing through dimensions. And the, the Marian quartz crystal wrapped in copper and the feather here, this is connects us to our galactic family and the heart of infinity. The peacock feather, I mean, the ostrich feather is actually in the ritual in the Egyptian afterlife when your heart is weighed against a feather on the scales of Ma'at. And they have the wisdom to understand the importance to carry a light heart and live a happy, joyful life. So if your heart was not as light as a feather, you could not pass through the fields of illumination. And this crystal fluff is all based on a selenite crystal hand. This is a power crystal, as I know you know, dear Global Peace Tribe. It is a natural mover of energy and one of the few crystals that never needs to be cleared because it is always, in fact, clearing energy. And this yes. creative meditation offering from my heart to you is wow. quantumly entangled <laughs> with, with the most humblest, juicy cosmic yum to empower your love illusion. It's a heart-powered prayer technology. You begin by holding the crystal fluff to your heart and smiling to breathe in the breath of life, the gift of creation, and allow that cosmic hug of the breath to fill you from the inside out and just move your body any way that feels right. This is a form of aura fluffing and astral hygiene. When we apply it to our bodies, we can use the light touch as etheric EFT to transmute any negative energies. And when we are feeling that pure joy of heart, we can share with all of creation that loving spark. The stand comes with a copper, a choice between a copper and a cedar base. But for those days on the go to maintain maximum flow, I've created this line of crystal fluff wands. They also have the selenite handle and the copper base. It's Marabou feather floof, inner southwest <laughs> feathers to fluff you around, and you're able to really put these in your pocket and take it on the go so that you're able to share that sweetness everywhere that you flow. So, yeah. how do they get in touch with you? Join my website at missygalore.com. They're on my store. And you can find the music and art to Galactivate Hearts that I create. And please do join, join my email newsletter for regular Galactivations. You can also find I designed this shirt. It's Cosmic Prayer Wear. And Cosmic Prayer Wear. I like and, that. Empower your heart with smiles. I look forward to sharing these with you. And I will be adding a custom gift uh, wrap option as well, too, because I can ship anywhere. This has been such a beautiful practice for me. You know, no matter how many times I remind myself and go through my peaks and my triumphs of ascension you know life can get tough and trip me up and this is such a reliable go-to tool to keep me centered in my love and light and anchor me back 
You know, we all have the power within us to do anything that we choose to do. But these remembrances and these moments that we share together with the Global Peace Tribe, they last with us in our memories, in our cells. And when we can rainbow bridge back to them, they can help us maintain our optimum vibration and health. And these quantum crystal fluffs are cosmically designed to unite us in that state so that we may all flow in our heart of grace. It's yes. So I, I can vouch personally. She's she's the real deal, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, you know that's how I learned about fluffing. And it's really powerful because it's just vibration. Everything is vibration. And you can actually fluff vibrations. It's like you fluff a, you know, a pillow or a bed. You know, you can fluff out the old. You can send love to your ancestors. You know, you use the wands. You connect to yourself. You have a self that's waiting to be connected to. And feathers are a big part of that. You know, Native American, you know, all kinds of, you know, since the beginning of time, there's been a real connection with spirituality and feathers. So, uh, also I wanted to bring Jan up, but, and maybe she wanted to say a prayer, if, if you want. I don't know if the, how the timing is. Uh, did you want to say anything? All right, I could. And also, Dora Lee is in our um, audience in our room here, and she wanted to uh, say a prayer. But I don't have. I don't know how to make get her uh, there. But um, I, you know, I would just love to um, continue on our power of gratitude night. And I just think. Um, and of course, I don't know why I'm not being seen. Um, should be young. You. Oh, you are. I see. Okay, gotcha. I'm just not seeing and myself. I just brought Dora Lee, and I am promoting her to panelist. Oh, great. Great. Yeah. Trying to see. Um, yeah, because we want to make sure we give everybody a little, a little chance. So. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. I'm. I'm yeah. Dan so. Gardner. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yeah, so the power of gratitude. Wow. What an amazing gift we have that everybody has access to. That's the incredible power of gratitude. And I love that light touch as we, you know, kind of uh, magnify or kind of amplify with our electromagnetic field uh, all around us. We can circulate these blessings out into the universe. And so tonight's show is so was so powerful and so beautiful. And I'd love to just send out all of our prayers and blessings from this Zoom room out into the universe and just pray and invoke that that we all be open to receiving all the blessings. And that's a good place to start. And it's just a really simple prayer that we can just be open to receive all the blessings that are here in every moment for us to have. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. 10,000 thank yous uh, for helping us magnify our invocations and prayers with the magic of light touch. And so thank you all for being here too. What a great audience, what a great uh, global peace tribe we have. So um, yay. And Dora Lee, are you, are you in the room? Um, your camera is not, oh, there your camera is on. All righty. I'm just learning how to do this. So am I, right. can, I unmuted, does that work? You're, yeah, you're, welcome. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, we usually set a timer is the way we do it. Just, but you know, we'll we'll just set it for two and a half, three minutes, or whatever. How how long would you like to, you know? I invoke? just pray until it's done. But you know, I yeah. don't know, three, five minutes, well, something like that. Yeah, like you know, two and a half minutes is usually that's what we. Okay, usually just do. give me a warning, and then I can wrap it up. You know, one ding, and then a ding, and I'll end it. Yeah, if you Maybe. hear a little bell, if you hear a little bell. Okay. Ding, ding, okay. All right. The elves are in the in the arenas, you know, this time of year. 
Exactly. So I've been praying a lot. I pray every day and I get a lot of information through all this COVID time and different things. And I haven't been praying with a group or, or, or people. So um, I might be putting down a lot of things that have been coming. But anyway, so just uh, relax and take a breath and focus in on that life force, that breath that is just a gift that we never have to think about breathing. It is the source of that oneness of life of which the heartbeat radiates and pulses as one as we focus and tap on it. And so right now I invoke all the angels, the archangels, the galactic guides, the councils, Buddha, Jesus, Christ, the Indians, the Native American spiritual leaders of so much wisdom upon this earth and the gifts that it teaches us on how to bless and honor this earth. And so right now, I know that this power is fully invoked and pulsating through my entire being and every cell of my body. And as I know this is true for me in this holy and sacred moment, I know this is true for each and every person here on this call and in the entire globe and the planet. For right now, there is a time of expansion of the rising and ascension of frequency and vibration that the whole globe is going through from the aboriginals to the Amazon tribes, to the people in New York, to wherever you are. We are that human, common spiritual beings having this limited human experience in which we get to re-remember who we truly are as those light beings and as that place of touch that you're saying, the light and the light touch. I just love that. And so I also speak my word that if there is anything blocking anyone's good or abundance or prosperity or wisdom or healing, that it gently, gently be brought up to the surface and let go of and created and replaced with the positiveness the self-assurance, that connection to the truth of who they truly are, that direct con to spirit, to source, whatever flavor you want to have, whatever works for you. It is all one and it pulsates as one as it rises our frequencies and our vibration, even to people these days that haven't really asked for it publicly, you know, or in their present now, but their souls are asking for it. There are so many souls expanding and screaming out almost for healing and for love and kindness and gentleness. And so as I let go of these words, knowing that as my words are spoken and as our words are spoken, they are transformed and manifest into our lives, into the goodness, into the healing, into the rising of that. And so I let this go to these laws, knowing that everything Everything is handled in the power and the presence of this love, this kindness, this light, and this vibrations. And so I give thanks and gratitude and appreciation for all. And thank you so much, all of you, for allowing me to be in a present now and share. There you go. Perfect timing. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Yay. I think uh, Deborah Haviland wanted to. We just set the timer. That was perfect. You. Thank that's you. why we use it so you know everyone can have a turn, you know, equal turns. Divine channeling. You want to go, Deborah? We'll set it for I would love that. I would love it because I'm, I'm representing the East Coast here, and it's now 12.30 a.m., okay. and so I wanted to say a continuation. Oh, oh good. I'm in, I'm in St. Louis. We so, all thank oh, you. Neat. Wonderful. Yay. I loved your prayer. Thank you. And we all inspire each other. And, and then sometimes we just want to do another round. So I just want to say yes in the, in the spirit of deeply breathing into our heart and our bodies and using the feathers to stimulate nerve endings. And let's see, there's a name there. Uh, so I, I'm just so grateful for this prayer time and all of us praying together and I'm calling on great spirit, 
great Heavenly Father, Mother God, the spirit of divine love, come in even more deeply into us. And Jay, are you putting me there? Or I, I'm not even sure if I'm seeing where you're spotlighted. You're spotlighted. Oh, spotlighted. oh okay. I didn't see it. So anyway, in Heavenly Father, Mother God, great spirit, divine love, the source of creation, the light that guides us and illuminates our days, fill us with this divine love and all the sacred qualities, empathy and compassion, patience, cooperation, forgiveness, and the strength, the courage to go forward and keep blossoming and opening up like the lotuses that we are to our divine nature and purpose so that we can really give our gifts on this planet at this time. And I just say thank you to everyone. God bless you. And may we keep coming together. I invite more people to join our prayer pod. And that I love doing prayer sessions. I, I'm a prayer practitioner, a light touch prayer practitioner. I love helping people who want to come and work on issues or just open up to more spirit, you know, getting clarification about your path and your purpose, whatever it is. We help you with our prayers, and we're grateful you're here. Thank you. It is amazing how many prayers you can get in two and a half minutes, ladies and gentlemen. So, yes, uh, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> we, also, we also do this thing, it's called the speed round. Maybe we could pull up the gallery here. We could do a little speed round. I could go first. Missy could go second, Fanny could go third, Deborah could go last. First, who is last is first. So I, I just start out, you can do it at home. You Thank you for blessing everyone watching with your very best <laughs> blessings. Thank you for the light of healing love and the empowering community, nourishing us within and without to live our very, very best. May this holiday season anchor in true, humble connection to the celebrations humans have been activating through the centuries and beyond the ages in a giant mm. co-creation celebration of light touch love. Uh, you're muted, Fanny. So just letting you know, I think Fanny's going to play a little harp for us. You're, you're muted, dear. Can you hear me? Bagari, she's muted. You're muted! Uh. <laughs> Binds us all together. Let us not forget that we are all one. And what's good for us is that whatever we give, we receive. Wow. 
Beautiful. Right. Mm. I've got. That was wonderful. I, the harp is just mm. such an ancient instrument. It's as old as the feathers. You know, it's been around for a long time. The harp. It's probably like one of the first instruments, celestial. Uh, so I'm going to play one video for you. This is a light touch video, and I'll give you a kind of a sample of what light touch is all about. Uh, here we go. It's for exponential financial blessing. have a hundred of those videos more uh, it's what I do I make videos and uh, so thank you for all being here this has been a fun night and a great night and the global peace tribe you know let's let's grow this because it's important it's important to have a tribe and to be part of something right Scott absolutely <laughs> Uh, so is this a wrap up a chance for me to wrap up Jay well you said that you had something that you wanted to play do you still want to do that um, well yeah I mean uh, I think it's getting late and uh, most of our audience has gone to bed I appreciate those of you that are still with us I uh, just wanted to remind you of tomorrow um, it's gonna be a very special Sacred Sunday show um, you know uh, the people that I've got are all direct ancestors Connie is a direct ancestor from the Mayflower and Barbara is a direct ancestor from both the Mayflower and the actual Indian tribe that were the first what we call the first Thanksgiving took place and Andrew is a scholar who has some really interesting historical understanding of it so it's going to be a really fascinating and wonderful show Connie and Andrew are two of our regulars on this show um, they come all the time so please do join us tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock for the Sacred Sunday show. And Shay, any last thoughts you want to share? Did you have a, a Louis, uh, one of Louis' uh, videos that you wanted that. to show? If you want, that, that might be a nice way to go out with beauty and grace. All right, all right, I've got it right here. Oh, Thank you all for, for showing up. We're gonna do another one, probably another after show in a couple weeks, probably a, grat a Christmas show. So uh, let us know if you have any themes that uh, are near and dear to your heart. 
Um, all right. And do you want to, uh, Shan, do you want to introduce the Louis v video? Are you available? Um, yes, I, I'm available. And Scott, um, if you could post your uh, Sacred Sunday link. Uh, there's still 61 people in the Zoom room, and awesome. people are asking how to find your Sacred Sunday oh, show. I will post that in as soon as we start the Louis video. All righty. And um, this video um, that Louis Schwartzberg made, uh, he's going to base his feature film uh, on the success of the, uh, it, this video was so well received and um, he has brother David Stendhal Rast uh, narrating and it's really lovely and it's a great way to end the show. So thank you guys, I hope you enjoy it. Moving Art by Louis Schronborn. When I watch TV, it's just some shows that you just that are pretend, and and when you explore, you get more imagination than you already had, and um, when you get more imagination, it makes you want to go deeper in, so you can get more and see beautiful things. Like it could the path, if it's a path, it could lead you, it could lead you to a beach or something, and it could be beautiful. you think this is just another day in your life? It's not just another day. It's the one day that is given to you today. It's given to you. It's a gift. It's the only gift that you have right now. And the only appropriate response is gratefulness. If you do nothing else but to cultivate that response to the great gift that this unique day is, if you learn to respond as if it were the first day in your life, and the very last day, then you will have spent this day very well. Begin by opening your eyes and be surprised that you have eyes you can open. That incredible array of colors that is constantly offered to us for pure enjoyment. Look at the sky. We so rarely look at the sky. We so rarely note how different it is from moment to moment with clouds coming and going. We just think of the weather. And even of the weather, we don't think of all the many nuances of weather. We just think of good weather and bad weather. This day, right now, it's unique weather. Maybe a kind that will never exactly in that form come again. The formation of clouds in the sky will never be the same that is right now. Open your eyes, look at that. Look at the faces of people whom you meet. Each one has an incredible story behind their face story that you could never fully fathom. Not only their own story, but the story of their ancestors. We all go back so far. And in this present moment, on this day, 
hard people you meet, all that life from generations and from so many places all over the world flows together and meets you here like a life-giving water if you only open your heart and drink. Open your heart to the incredible gifts that civilization gives to us. You flip a switch and there is electric light. You turn a faucet and there is warm water and cold water and drinkable water. It's a gift that millions and millions in the world uh, will never experience. So these are just a few of an enormous number of gifts to which we can open your heart. And so I wish you that you will open your heart to all these blessings and let them flow through you. That everyone whom you will meet on this day will be blessed by you. Just by your eyes, by your smile, by your touch, just by your presence. Let the gratefulness overflow into blessing all around you. And then it will really be a good day. Wow, what a beautiful video. Absolutely beautiful. Um, well, I want to thank everybody for watching. Hope to see you all on Sacred Sunday tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, and all of our shows every weekend. I'm going to go to Gallery View so we can wave goodbye and say goodbye to everybody who's here. Thank you, Jay, for your after show. Fanny, I love your harp music. Missy, thank you for your magic. Deborah, thank you for your prayer. Blessings, everybody. And let's continue this gratitude wave uh, throughout each and every day. Let's stay truly in a, a deep space of gratitude with each other at all times.